Screams of pain and pleas for help broke through the darkness with sharp shoots. They melted into the darkness like SOS signals from a hopeless underwater bathyscaphe. The sounds of this pain were heard in the middle of the night by a girl who was lying on a wide bed. Long blonde hair fell around her slender frame. The moan was barely audible, as if from a pierced chest. The girl was extremely sad. Her head seemed to be splitting. Why are there tears on your face? Unable to pronounce any sound. Are these her thoughts about pain? No, definitely not hers. Someone was crying inside her mind. They had already taken out a sigh, and after each phrase the blonde added a hiss, then a hush, and her fingers squeezed the rippled blankets. The first rays of the sun crept into her bed. Finally, she couldn't stand it, opened her eyes and stood up and called so ion. Long iron hair tossed around sharply, showing irritation. No one spoke up, and the blonde wrapped her arms around her forearms. Then she called out like in the forest, A go of! About another complaint of pain, somewhere from the depths of her being, the girl disgruntled shouted something about where so had gone Ion. She was sure she was in the car with her niece and older sister driving the car, but where did she disappear? A black girl was riding in the back seat. Little Soyan was laughing in her arms. Apartment buildings floated past the window. The blonde was sitting on the bed and peering into her memory dumps in surprise. Her bright green eyes had a slightly startled look. Car accident. This is what happened, and where is she now? The girl did not recognize any of the objects located in this room. The room itself couldn't be her home either. Well, it's not a hospital. A real fireplace, a rocking chair in front of the fire, candlesticks, sconces, and candelabra. There are poofs and an old-style dressing table nearby. And is her sister safe, so Ion? The girl decided that it would be easier to organize her thoughts if she walked a little and jumped out of bed. As soon as the blonde was in a vertical position, her head suddenly hurt and she felt dizzy. Instinctively, she wrapped her arms around her and felt a strong heat, as if iron ore was being melted in her. Next, the atmosphere of the room seemed to take on a crackler. Unfamiliar scenes of everyday life began to appear in the imagination, unlike anything seen so far. The pictures from these non-her memories were also as if torn. The clothes on the people were as if from another era. The blonde guessed that these memories belonged to another person, to a person who held a goblet with the drink of her eyes in frail, black-gloved hands and was dressed in black and green robes, because she is black as a gypsy, a fourth-year student with a horse tail of straight hair who really runs like a horse through interviews in search of a decent job. Another personality that she discovered in herself is a blonde who dresses with chic, a socialite who is at all the famous events, where she gets drunk to the point of losing her pulse. The black woman adored the older sister's cute child, and because of that she nursed her for days, getting a lot of pleasure from it. But the blonde openly hated her entire family, whether it was a brother or a sister, and I would be happy to never see them, even at home. So, for unknown reasons, two personalities appeared in one body, fighting with each other, like water and oil in one glass, cold sweat on her face. Then who is she? Which of these two? The thought was shattered by a call. Someone was calling a lady named Marcia. In front of the blonde stood a girl in a black dress with long sleeves and a white collar and apron. She said that she was worried about Marcia's paleness and offered to call a doctor. Finally, it cleared up in her head. Her mind calmed down and the blonde realized everything that was happening, as if she had always known it, the name of her other, and that she had become a character in the book. Marcia Bleak is a girl with blonde hair shining like the summer sun and incredible emerald eyes, an aristocrat from a fairy tale. When the black student sat in the back seat of her sister's car and got into an accident, Marcia was returning to the premises and also became a participant in the car wreck. These events happened at the same moment and caused the merging of the souls of both girls in the body of Marcia, who at the same time was a character in a book that so loved Ion. A beauty runs away from a bad family where she was subjected to torture, and after overcoming a number of difficulties, the fairy tale gives her true love. A black girl read this story to so Ion so many times that she learned every line by heart. But did she really become a character in this book? After all, Marcia is not even her main character, because the main thing there was a girl who was bullied by a vile older sister. So first of all, you should make sure that the girl is in the mentioned fairy tale. And the fastest and most reliable method is to go down to the basement. And got up with a groan.
The maid, who was going to call the doctor, prevented the plans. She informed that Milady should be kept in bed because of her injured leg. But Marcia rudely shoved the servant, telling him to leave. But she fell, only having time to gasp. Bilyavka did not expect such an effect of her movement. She couldn't find words, thinking that this was unusual and what happened at that moment. In addition to surprise, the girl's eyes reflected anger. Analyzing the situation, the blonde noted that the body was moving by itself, and there was an assumption that it was probably Marcia. The next conclusion was that the minds of black and white were mixed, but not completely. How could you push a person who cares about her? At the same time, Marcia's inner child was outraged that there is such a thing. The maid gets money for it. Out loud, the lady ordered to sweep out because no one allowed her to enter. Again? Roth said it himself. The maid humbly said that she understood and bowed. Obviously, she was used to such an attitude. Somehow, but in the fairy tale, the blonde is the personification of evil. If you believe Marcia's memories, it was thought that the key to the basement is in the library next door. That's where she headed. The second bookshelf from the top. The third book. Here are the keys to the basement, in a secret drawer. Marcia did not go down there for years, so she did not think that she would use the key because she was afraid of the basement. Her room is located on the top floor of the building, although it is usually on such floors that salaried workers are settled. Despite her background, Marcia insisted that she would live upstairs, but she needs to go to the basement room that is the furthest away. Her soul was torn between the reluctance of the blonde to go there and the firm intention of the black woman to go to the end. I felt fear, all because of that child in the basement. In front of the girl was a cold, dark staircase without a single lamp. With the turn of the key, the heartbeat accelerates. She took the lantern and began to descend. Pain in the leg makes it difficult to walk. Do they really need to go there? You can probably make sure in some other way. If this is really the same fairy tale, we need to find out the truth. This is the end of the marble stairs. Everyone will think that there is no one here. The lantern was burning. The fire was eating the candle. An ordinary lamp, as in the old days, outlined the figure of an aristocrat with a warm halo against the background of a high iron door. Open the door. Nails were hammered into the board on the wall, turning it into a coat hanger, and four long objects were hung, one with a thin end, another with a beveled end, then rounded. The last one was all long and thin. She has to go there. The secret of the Blick family is hidden there. The last room is in the basement, where not a single ray of light penetrates from the outside. In a room with raw stone walls, more like a dungeon, there is a musty spirit of antiquity and dust. Under the wall on an oak table in the shape of a hexa, there is a lamp burning in the center, a round palace. The thoughtful eyes of the girl glittered, as did the emerald earrings reflecting the flame of the candle. She cupped her chin and mouth with her hand. Can a person really live in such a moldy, cool place, let alone a child? Marcia's younger sister, the main character of the fairy tale, is Larissa Bleak. Marcia's shadow stretched over the 13-year-old girl. She was lying on the bed in a black, roomy dress, with her legs up and hugging the pillow, looking scared. Oh, what madness! Under the thick black eyelashes, green eyes like fresh summer greens, shining silvery braids, and incredible beauty, which is in perfect harmony with these features, are expressed. Even in a state of immature insecurity and torn clothes, she is a heroine who stepped off the pages of a book, and her arms and shoulders are covered with sores. Noble snow-white skin has never met the sun's rays. That's why the girl is pale, and her state is hunched over and trembling with fear. This is the main character, whom everyone mocked. Marcia, whose appearance is bright and warm from the candlelight, looks with glazed eyes at the child, who has drawn her legs under her. Under such lighting, it looks as if they have the same braids. Catastrophe. The lady's face filled with a mixture of disgust, fear, and anger. Only three years. She discovers that Marcia has three years left to live. The young woman knelt down. In my imagination, a black student with a ponytail appeared, reading a book to her niece. Marcia remembers this story by heart. But will it help her? And why? But because it's just a fairy tale. A story surrounded by thorns which fits into the green binding of an A5 book. This story does not even contain the names of its characters, but there are many illustrations in it which sometimes shed light on more facts than words. The main character, as it were, was copied from Larissa, who was now disheveled on the bed in front of Marcia.
The girls were especially similar in hair and eyes, so Marsha's younger sister really lived in the basement, and that is why the lady did not like to come here and often left the premises. The girl unsuccessfully tried to drown her grief in wine in order to forget herself and her family. That's why she disappeared at those parties. Seeing what was happening in her family, especially the attitude towards her youngest member, was completely unacceptable for her. But what did Larissa, who lived as if in a cell, think about all this? Was it because of a lack of vitamins that her skin was imperfect everywhere? Marcia overlooked something. It was necessary to be more vigilant. She had to pay, and dearly, for her actions. The door creaked. She turned at the sound. He is a stout blonde man in his forties. His disgruntled appearance and disgusted look in his blue eyes, his out-of-date light brown jacket and gray brown tie made it impossible to tell his age. This is Marsha's father, Ihor Bleak. The man asked through his teeth what she was doing here. Oops, burned. And what kind of relationship did the girl have with her father? Igor concluded that since the girl was able to get down here despite the fact that she had an accident, she was not seriously injured. The master of the house put his hand on her shoulder and looking into her eyes kindly said that it is still advisable to observe bed rest. He ordered to go to rest, adding that there is no need to be here. Zero reaction. Then he began to push her out of the room with the words, Well, leave. The girl shouted, Stop! and resisted despite the pain. Are you sure? The issue is resolved, and now it's dark to the room. Marcia tried to understand why he pushed her out of here. It was heard. Sooner. Oh, no. And what not? Miss Bleak stood like Alice in Wonderland, so small and helpless in front of the huge door. Around her, the light of the muzzle danced in a blurred circle. Then there was a cry. Cry, cry now. Will she be silent even after that? Something seemed to flash in Marcia's eyes. Her mouth dropped open in surprise. Her father's voice threatened to say that their business was failing again because of her. They are starving. There is no money. And all because she was too lazy to cry. Oh, cry. With the cry, father, the older one burst into the room. He addressed himself condescendingly with the words, dear Marcia. Didn't he tell her to go back to her room? In his left hand was a long object with a tapered end that still hung on the board. The penumbra of the transferred vector was smeared from his figure due to low lighting. What is going on here? The girl stood in the open door with maddened eyes because she guessed that her father had clearly not come here to bring candies. Larissa was sitting on her knees on the bed, covering her head with a fragile hand. Long braids reached the bedspread. The gentle light of the bedside floor lamp caressed his back gently. The eldest daughter looked in front of her with an angry look and tried to analyze the reasons for her father's behavior. Her emerald earrings swayed to the beat of her heart. Avoiding the basement for years, Marcia practically erased from her memory. No, she desperately tried to forget the reason for Larissa's stay here and move on. Get out of your head the secret hidden deep in the dungeon of the luxurious estate of the Bleak family. Now, streams of water flowed from Larissa's eyes, her eyes really resembled two forest fountains in which greenery was reflected. Diamonds are clean and transparent, playing with all colors, born deep under the incredible pressure of the earth from ordinary coal from burnt wood. Such is the beginning of the fairy tale, beautiful and cruel. Oh, ho, father was happy. His low-set ears somewhat resembled a leprechaun because they were pointed at the top. He exclaimed, at last, and rushed to seek fate. He collected tears. The salty drops hardened and hardened. If only she had cried sooner. Well, with this, he will be able to start business again. The eyes of the widely smiling Igor shone with excitement. He was looking at the diamonds collected from the floor. Little Larissa's salty tears turn into the purest big diamonds of an impeccable shape. That's it. He went upstairs. He also ordered Marcia to get up who at that moment was thinking what a scumbag her father was. So, the main character of the fairy tale is a girl whose tears turn into diamonds. Larissa stood and seemed to be praying. Her quiet figure was surrounded by platinum rivers of hair. Her mother died during childbirth. Since then, her family began to spend money on booze, gambling, and investing in various startups. It didn't matter what those costs were. Igor held little Larissa in a flowery pink dress with a green bow on his outstretched arms in front of him and looked at her sullen face, because they had a lot of money. The family, at first confused, soon began to deliberately provoke Larissa to cry. 
Even Marcia, who did not go down to the basement herself, sent a nanny for this. The girl was treated like a soulless ATM, but a fairy tale always has a happy ending, right? When Larissa grows up, a slim, elegant girl with incredible eyes will appear in the mirror, and someone will appear who could not help but fall in love with her. And he fell in love, according to the plot of this fairy tale at first sight. This is a black guy in a blue and white coat with refined manners, a real prince. He dealt with the entire evil Blick family, which treated the main character of this tale so cruelly. In this way, the beauty was saved, and they lived happily ever after with the prince. The way Larissa looked when she met her sister after the car accident made Marcia think that it was three years before this event. Therefore, the older girl decided, holding her head in concentration, it is necessary to run away immediately. Suddenly, it will be possible to save her own life. But don't you take some money with you? The nanny came to treat Larissa's wounds and was surprised to see Marcia here. The worried nanny carefully examined the scars on the young lady's face. At the same time, she gently touched her forearm with a napkin soaked in disinfectant. Looking at them, the elder sister or the second entity that was also inside her thought that this was a crazy family. She thoughtfully covered her mouth with her palm. Might not be such a bad idea to run off with their money, because Marcia hardly has any savings. Larissa looked at her sister as if she had read her thoughts. Her eyes were wide, her mouth twisted with an expression of resentment. The nanny treated her right cheek. The look and response was decisive. From the specific lighting, it seemed that the lady's eyes were bloodshot. My dear so Ion? This thought broke through the consciousness of Marcia, who untangled a tangle of thoughts in her head. The nanny continued to take care of the teenager, sitting next to him on the bed. The older sister continued to stand nearby and watch. The black girl cherished her as if so Yan was her own child, to such an extent that she read fairy tales to her. Marcia clenched her fists at the thought that no one had read fairy tales to her younger sister, and the girl looked sadly at the napkin in the nanny's hand. In the fairy tale, Larissa was simply saved by a handsome prince. For some reason, the cover of the book was decorated with an image of some kind of tool similar to nippers, the handles of which are symmetrically decorated with tree branches. For some reason, in such a poignant story, there was no description of the psychological state of the heroine. Although it was about events that had a negative impact on the state of mind, how could it be ignored? I would like to help her already, but with a sick body, it will only get worse, she thought, limping to the room. We can escape together, but with utmost caution. Two hired girls were rolling a cart of wood for the fireplace and discussing recent events when Marcia came across them. The collision scared them. They began to apologize for not noticing her. The lady's inner child tried to calm her anger at the servant's lament. Failure to build relationships with staff can lead to disaster after the escape. The girls whispered that the young lady had injured her head in the accident because she had not nailed them on the spot. She was surprised to hear a barely perceptible sound coming from there. Marcia's brother Willen came in with a whimper that soaked his expensive fur. Marcia laughs at him and his overly rude behavior with the staff, came to her senses late, answering that she was not going to look at him, but to cross paths with him. And she heard a thump that she was too walking for her injury, and that she should be angry about her divorce. The reason for the breakup of this marriage a month ago was the bankruptcy of the father, the gambling addiction of the brother. Marcia did not even see him in the eyes. But the stigma of breeding oppressed her, and Willen was aggressive because of his father's appeal to his conscience, being sure that he would inherit everything anyway, and he beat his sister to drink on Lara's tears. Pouring dirt on each other, Marcia summed up that her brother only inherited the worst traits from her mother and Larissa, the genes of a fairy, so her tears become diamonds, or maybe the eldest daughter has some strength. Having guessed that villain intended to go to the basement, Marcia grabbed his hand and warned that it could kill the little one and gave her emerald earrings. They were enough for a month of drinking. I figured it out with my brother. It's time to run away from this madhouse with Larissa. Why not leave her here for another three years? Since the prince must fall in love at first sight and she reciprocated, can they marry earlier? Marcia rummaged through library books until late at night. She intended to bring the prince here, because she is in a fairy tale, but without a prince. The local king is childless. Yes, I found the coat of arms. Prince, Archduke. Archduke Fabian here is the same as a prince, the only one from the Loren family who does not yet have descendants. 
Although different ages with Lara, this is the norm here, and his coat of arms is like patterns in a fairy tale, hints and in pictures. In the illustrations of the story, the prince is tall, slender, black. I would like to enlist the support of the Lorens. Otherwise, you can take your jewelry to a pawn shop, and from a week you need to treat your legs. The memory of the lady remained, and the behavior changed. The previous owner of the body herself did not respond to the call, and in four days, the black student learned that her soul was slowly merging with the essence of Marcia. And it was on this day that the abilities appeared, to hear from afar what the maids were whispering about behind the door, and even hear thoughts, but only bad ones. This made the girl a psychopath and a recluse, so it was impossible to ignore the screams in the basement. Instead of avoiding suffering, one should find its cause. Igor turned and went to the basement. Marcia had to speed up the implementation of her intention. In the morning, Marcia came down and promised Larissa that she would not come close and asked her to show herself and raise her voice. Obviously, she heard and understood her, tried to gain trust with gingerbread cookies. The lady pretended to be mad and roused the maids with attacks on her unprepared outfit for an important meeting and tore a new dress, now immediately go to the store by carriage because it's already a fairy tale. Marcia is natural, hysterical. Everyone stays away. She didn't even have breakfast, ordered the maid to load the suitcase herself and not attract anyone's attention, and in the suitcase was the main point of the plan. The older sister told the younger one to hide in the suitcase to go with her and get out of the place, and promised not to leave her alone, but to stay together until it was safe. The angry saleswoman shouted that the opening of the store was in an hour. Marcia said hello to Nora. She was worried that the young girl was getting on everyone's nerves. It is necessary to restore the dress by the evening. She said that she brought everything that she did not like. It should be modernized. A young man entered, lifting his hat, and asked permission to leave the suitcases. Yes, she is still alone. And apologized to Nora for the mess. Marcia told Nora that it was because of running away from home, but she was afraid that she would be accused of complicity. How convenient to hear thoughts. And the lady rushed to beg to summon a transport secretly from the servants who were watching nearby. As they search, she climbs through the shops and gave a bag of gold. The Martians chose the cheapest outfit, changed their hair. Now no one will recognize them. She thanked and left. Like another person, after the third transfer, she finally opened the suitcase with her sister, even if she was not dazzled. For the first time, Larissa stepped on the fallen leaves of a deciduous forest. And now, a gift. I gave her a hat. How can a child be so modest? The hat made the teenager even cuter. This is where the Archduke's possessions begin. It's time to eat. The girls went to the inn. Lara couldn't even get a word out. Marcia explained that next they would go to Archduke Loren. If she meets him, sorrows and worries will end. You will be able to choose what to eat for the rest of your life, because he is rich and not greedy. And the main thing is that he will not allow her tears. He does not need them. This monologue was overheard by a boy in black, with an evil look in his red eyes. The boy seemed handsome to Marcia, although his clothes were somewhat dirty. And the boy mentally christened the lady in the image of a simpleton crazy and cursed the cook, dreaming of whipping her and getting well drunk. Igor... Coming here? How did you find out? She grabbed Larissa and dragged her under the table. The boys have seen these hiding places, but there is nowhere else to go. The first thing the father asked was whether the gentleman had seen the two girls, his daughters, one small with silver braids, the other an older blonde, because the little one is on vitally necessary medicines, which must be taken on time. The boys replied that they had not seen it. Why did that guy cover them up? That's the problem. At that moment, they brought their order. The boys hurried to put it to them. The girl's father suspected a lie because they already had food. But they said that they didn't have enough and ordered more. And the cook gave them a nod. Chornyavi told Igor to go and search further. When the father left, he explained that it would be uncomfortable for him to eat in an atmosphere when someone is dragging someone away and inviting them to the table. His joke that he would call Igor back for making too much noise was cruel. Marcia explained to her sister that Igor could only describe his height and hair color. Therefore, it is necessary to hide the braids, and she tied a scarf for herself. If you don't attract attention, they won't find you, she thought, overcoming her fear. 
The girl heard the opinion that there is no need to kill people, but she did not know from whom, definitely not Larissa. That soul continued the thought with the words that you only need to act according to the instructions so that no one gets hurt. The opinion of some minor should be stabbed and run away, the girl could not ignore, although she usually tried to pass the pros, ignoring everyone. Reading minds ruined her life, so she became evil. Why is this one here? She saw guys in the crowd who covered her and Lara. What did they do that someone decided to kill them in the middle of the street? He has noble external data, but this raggedness is alarming. Auto? Is there such a thing in this world? Although, since there are trains... And how did his clothes get damaged in the accident? What was that boy up to? I can't stay away, service for service. Marcia foiled the plans of the little one, calling and throwing a couple of coins into a handful of bread. Now she will not attack secretly. The boys paid attention to how she asked why the boy was hiding his hand. Everyone understood everything. And if the child gets rid of now? It makes no sense. Who is the customer? There is always an adult shadow behind such a person. The child's life is saved. There were no tickets for Dippy at the station. A familiar black and blonde man witnessed the conversation with the cashier and offered to ride in their compartment. Marcia gave up the hope of hiring a carriage. Then the black man asked directly, Igor Bleek is chasing them, isn't he? In this case, they can be caught before the next station. The lady grabbed the knife. He noticed and did not show. The boy explained that he wanted to thank for the rescue in the square. Marcia listened to his thoughts and did not hear anything. It means that they do not wish evil, and happily agreed. Larissa was glued to the train window in delight. The older sister thanked the boys and asked their names, introducing herself and the baby. So, the saviors are called Arno, and the fair-haired one is called Poe. Their clothes are dirty, but not cheap, and they have enough money to travel first class. Perhaps it is a middle-class noble or a commoner who has become an aristocrat. When asked why Marcia looked at the clothes, she guessed that the young men had an accident. She guessed and at the same time prompted them to the idea of calling the invention a car. As soon as they succeed, they will call it that. Arno laughed. But how does she know what it's for? Now the lady laughed, which is saying too much. The first thing that comes to mind. But the project may not be successful? Arno admitted with a smile that he financed the development a little because it interested him and he came to test the prototype. However, the car broke down before it had traveled a hundred feet, and it has no brakes, so the passengers flew to kiss the ground. That's why they are so dirty. Marcia had the thought that her accident had ended fatally. Now she is in a fairy tale. Poe added that the car is moving faster than the carriage. Brakes are needed. The lady enthusiastically assured that during the heyday of industrialization, the investment in this thing would pay off in a way that would last a lifetime. And she offered her own contribution. The boys suspected something, and they asked the reason for their trip to the duchy. The girl was indignant. She didn't say that she was going there. Arno says, but no, she said, to her sister in the restaurant he heard. Eavesdropping is impolite. She decided to smooth out the atmosphere that was beginning to build up and smiled. Indeed, she plans to meet the Archduke. The black boy wondered why she was meeting with Archduke Lauren. It seems that he was really interested. He looked carefully at the girls. The lady happily announced that Larissa would become his bride, because the Prince Archduke must fall in love with her at first sight three years later. But even now he can understand that she is his destiny. Arno laughed loudly, and Poe thoughtfully asked if the young lady was serious. Assuming she had said something inappropriate or impolite, Marcia apologized with a guilty look. Larissa turned to the window. The sister asked her if she liked the train and if she felt well, if she did not feel dizzy or nauseous. Larissa answered with a silent, grateful look. The older sister quietly offered the younger one to tell or poke her in the side if she needed to go to the bathroom. Poe noted that Marcia is very careful with her sister, but only the girls knew that before she didn't care about her at all. On the contrary, she bullied her through the nanny and never saw her with her own eyes. She remembered how she wanted to run away on her own, but the realization that Lara would be forced to cry for another three years contributed to her impulsive decision to deliver her to the prince herself. Poe assumed that the girl was extremely shy. Marcia explained that this is because she is not very well, she is healthy, but she is going through a severe shock. Therefore, it needs care. And no guesses. 
how many years or decades it will take for her to get rid of such a serious injury, because she is not a therapist. There is only hope that everything will end. I am in the original fairy tale. She will surely feel better after meeting the Archduke. In the end, the prince will marry Larissa and they will live happily ever after, just like in a fairy tale. Arno put the palm of his right hand to his heart and said that, as an apology, he would take them to the Archduke's residence. The girl burst out laughing, saying that the gentleman was joking, but thanked her. But the guy confirmed that he would help without joking. Are they not nobles, but only servants in the estate? As if answering her thoughts, Arnaud said with humble dignity that as a man responsible for an important job in the estate, he was in a position to lead the lover through the main entrance. Does everything go according to plan, since he will help upon arrival? Marcia intensely analyzed everything that was happening. Dippy Station was announced at this time. Marcia did not have time to be frightened by the news that they were already waiting, because she saw a round ivory carriage pulled by white mules was waiting for the passengers on the platform. A coat of arms flaunted the carriage door, crossed swords and roses on a white gilded shield. Symbolism from a fairy tale. Now the girl was sure that everything was going according to plan, she even sat down next to Larissa and said with amazement, What a luxurious carriage. Poe glanced at the landscape outside the window, his glasses at the same time glinting in the sun. The hunting grounds ruled by the Archduke's family begin from here. Driving is prohibited without permission. They will pass through the forest and end up near the estate. The girl saw the buildings and recognized, This is indeed the residence of Archduke Loren. Arno confirmed her guess. They are in place kindly inviting. Poe jumped down and offered Marcia his hand. She thanked and thought, it should have been noticed first, they were brought here by the Archduke's carriage, and he calmly passed through the main gate. The whole family came out to say hello and bowed to the black boy. One of the maids politely accepted his dirty cloak. Is Arno the Archduke? The girl's eyes widened in surprise, and she clearly declared that Larissa will become his bride. Now it is clear why Arno was laughing so much. Marcia covered her gaping mouth and blushed to the ears. But he spoke so veiledly about the Archduke, as if he were another man. A young, well-dressed young man came out to the girls. He addressed each of them by name, informed them that it was difficult to get into the Archduke's residence, and invited them to follow him to his eminence. Marcia asked Poe if Arno was an Archduke. He cleared his throat and said he was sorry, but he wasn't. Soon she will understand everything herself. You just have to follow the butler. He smiled. He is asking here. As expected, luxury here is on a completely different level. The girls looked at the light of the stained glass windows and the furniture. Marcia and Larissa brought tea and told them that His Highness had asked to wait a little. It didn't matter how crazy their escape was, it was more important that they showed up here unprepared. How, for example, to introduce Larissa? That love will be in three years, but will it happen sooner? If Larissa smiles, everyone will melt. Her sister explained that this is tea, but this is a cake, and how to eat it properly. Hmm, how delicious. Does she not want to taste? The girl drank her tea and admired how cute her sister was eating the cookies, wondering if she had ever been given something sweet. Marcia never went down to the basement, trying to forget herself in a debaucherous life, and did not even think about how much the quality of her sister's life depended on her behavior. Therefore, it is impossible to say. What is generally known about Larissa? only that she cries diamonds. Their mother was a fairy. There are rumors that she loved her husband in a human way. When Marcia was very young, her mother died, giving birth to Larissa. Both girls know nothing more about their mother. Memories of childhood are not pleasant. Due to the ability to hear only dissatisfaction and anger, Marcia grew up resenting her mother. The lady looked sadly into the cup, delicately holding it by the ear with two fingers. Probably the same is happening with Larissa. The girl feasted on goodies, but her face did not show any emotion. They say fairies cry with diamonds, therefore, due to the greed of people, they died out a long time ago. This little girl repeated the fate of these poor people. These painful tears are proof that Lara has inherited more fairy blood. At last it was announced that the Archduke had arrived. The prince who will finally save Larissa? Marcia looked at the door, which was politely opened for the owner, with her mouth open and great surprise. Lara grabbed her sister's hand and both girls knelt down. The person in front of them was elderly and in a wheelchair. But he is very old. The man turned to Marcia and asked if she wanted to see him. 
Larissa hid behind her. The girl, dazed and with a darkened face, asked if he really was the Archduke. The prince confirmed. She just thought to herself that the author of the fairy tale is crazy. This cannot be. He is handsome despite his age, but the grandfather in front of her cannot be the prince who should save Larissa. Although undoubtedly they are in the same fairy tale. Because the age difference is too big. No, she can't let that happen. As an older sister, she is against this marriage. At the same time, the face darkened even more. And if the prince was just cursed, that's why he looks like an old man? As in the tale of the frog prince? According to the metric of the family tree, the prince should be 21 years old at this time. And Marcia surreptitiously asked if he was really Archduke Fabian Loren. Surprised, the man asked the servant if he hadn't heard and denied, this child is not the Archduke, while he himself is alive, and asked her name. The girl made a bow and introduced herself by her full name, then called her sister. In a moment, the butler announced that he had called for Sir Fabian. Arno entered and, straightening the frog, asked if Marcia had called him. He had already changed into clean clothes with luxurious gold embroidery. Since the girl was too surprised, the guy explained that his full name is Fabian Loren. Due to certain circumstances, he uses a pseudonym, Arno is only one of his names. Shocked, Marcia clenched her fists because of the realization that he was the real prince. And he really deserves to be that fairy tale prince. He just hasn't inherited the title yet. Because of the former... No, the current Archduke, who is still alive. The man sat with dignity and bearing, but the bitterness of the finitude of life slipped into his profile. The directory indicated that Fabian's parents were dead, but no word on whether his grandfather was alive. The Archduke warned his grandson not to overdo it with his jokes. Then he said that he was tired and apologized to Lady Bleak, but he would return to his resting place. She thanked. The girl asked Fabian if he didn't introduce himself on purpose, after hearing that the girls were going to the duchy, he must have been interested in them. The guy curtly cut off that that's right. His eyes slyly looked at the interlocutor. For the uninitiated, her words should have seemed suspicious. So even knowing the reason, he would not have said who he was. Marcia watched closely and could not understand why she was so angry. She lowered her eyes. One should not forget that this is a fairy tale. A prince and a beautiful maiden who fell in love at first sight will live happily ever after. That's how the story ended. She only accelerated the limb. Larissa watched the news with big eyes. Now you have to hand it over to him, and you can live peacefully. Fabian Arnaud looked focused and seemed to be barely able to contain his irritation. His red eyes did not pretend any happiness. Something wasn't right. No matter how you look, their faces don't look like the faces of lovers. It can't be... And why does Marcia think they're looking at her? She felt uncomfortable but still blurted out, I'm sorry. And don't they suddenly feel the desire to get married? Arno looks on skeptically. It seems that there is no smell of love here. At all. So she wasn't joking then. He is not even an archduke. The girl resolutely reported that she would become him and fall in love with Larissa in the future. Well, now everything is clear with her, Fabian wondered. Was she seriously trying to seduce her sister to his grandfather like that? Marcia bit her lip. Bad joke. There was condemnation in the voice. Is three years such a long period? It turns out he does not see the connection, looking at Larissa. And she looked at her herself. It was not necessary to go here immediately. It was necessary to let her grow up. But she can't leave the girl in the basement. You don't do anything. She will take care of her sister and hugged her behind. Instead of loneliness, you can live a little with her. But what to do now? Arno wondered. She hurt her leg, didn't she? He noticed that the girl was visibly limping, tried to get up carefully, and walked slowly. He will provide them with a room for a couple of days. A questioning, excuse me, came out of Marcia. Her face expressed surprise. Larissa just stood gloomily. Her appearance always indicated only sadness. He crossed his arms over his chest and generously explained that he did not want the girls to be taken anywhere against their will. That's all. It was suspected that their father was lying. Fabian could hear a lie a mile away. In any case, the father will no longer be able to pursue his daughter. And he looked at the smaller one, trying to catch a reaction. The sisters will leave a little later. Marcia had a guess. Wow, yes, love sometimes begins with mercy. She was happy, covered her wide smile with her hand. His phrase struck her like a stone. 
What a pity it is to have a strange sister. He told me to get ready, and when he regains consciousness, let him take Lady Larissa and go. She huffed. Time will tell whether he will love Larissa or not. As she put her sister to bed, Marcia praised her for her resilience. It was scary that he would have nowhere to lay his head. It's good that they have a place to sleep comfortably. The lady thought, within three years, the Air Defense Committee would be handed over to Fabian. Something must happen to the old Archduke. Suddenly, disturbing sounds were heard from somewhere outside. The girl concentrated and heard that the state of his highness was critical. A doctor is urgently needed. Did her fears come true? Dr. Bellman told the boy that the attacks have subsided, but the temperature is high. If another attack happens, you should prepare for the worst. The Archduke is already old, and recently he even had to sit in a wheelchair. The exhausted face of a man exhausted by the struggle for life confirmed these words. Fabian reasoned that his health was not so bad. Did someone do this on purpose? There are a couple of suspects here, but no evidence. Deveretsky reported that Valerie, Dominic, and their children had arrived. Looking at his aunt and uncle, Fabian thought that only these jackals could undermine the Archduke's health. The current Archduke Frederick Loren has three children, and two of them, Valerie and Dominic, are the most suspicious in connection with the premature death of Fabian's father. It is clear that their children are also under suspicion. Count Dominique Loren aggressively pounced on the boy by whose right Fabian had come here. Arno politely asked not to raise his voice in the presence of the patient. The uncle was furious that he didn't dare to forbid anything, because if it weren't for his father, Fabian would have been old a long time ago. How did you get there so quickly? By train. After receiving the sad news last night, I left immediately. Countess Valerie Conrad added that she had heard about her father's imminent death and had come with her daughter. I wonder if there is a reason. Young Eloise, with a friendly smile, asked how her brother was doing. She seems to be quite sincere. At least, the look in her lilac eyes was not impudently evil like her mother's. But Fabian only sent the message last night. Uncle said that he is not the only one who can deliver urgent news. In addition, the father can die. Only the only son can take his place. Fabian retorted that it was funny. Surely the rush was for the sake of a rich inheritance. Dominic accused his nephew of having poisoned him, because the Archduke became worse quite suddenly. The girl was frightened by this assumption. Moving away from Dominic, she stood next to her cousin. She remarked, Why would the brother do such a thing? All the same, only her uncle can become an Archduke. Valerie snarled that she would not allow her daughter to approach commoners. Fabian was indignant at the rudeness. The aunt opened the fan surrounded by feathers, and with a predatory smile and sly eyes, asked what was there with the will. The uncle enthusiastically took it up. He doesn't think the old man will ever get up again, so the last will must be quick. These words were addressed to the butler. Their behavior is already in their livers. Fabian watched silently as the relatives dreamed aloud of getting rid of the boy's presence in the house. The archduke changed his will. This news caused an uproar among relatives. They could not believe their ears. What it means? Does this mean that the previous records are not in the New Testament? Dvoretsky explained that until the Archduke's death is confirmed, he cannot disclose information because the secrecy of the will is in effect. Everyone to leave the room. His Highness needs complete peace. These words angered and confused the heartless children. Fabian returned to his office and called his assistant, calling him by his full name. Portis, and ordered him to finish with the papers, because he had to go to his favorite relatives. Poe said that he did not tell the relatives so as not to annoy them. But Lady Bleak asked for a lot of bandages and medicine for the wounds, but did not say for whom and did not call a doctor. It doesn't look like she asked for all this for herself. Otherwise it would be noticeable. Surely it is connected with that man, with his hasty search. Those worried faces of the girls when Igor left. It seems that the wounds are his handiwork. The ladies did not go out at night. The reasons for Marcia's suspicious actions should be found out. Until yesterday, Lady Blick didn't even know who the Archduke was. It is doubtful that she has anything to do with all this relative fuss. Fabian added that it would be difficult with Bellman, so another doctor should be called. And this case should be investigated just in case. Portis promised to carry out the instructions and said that the surveillance was already underway. Arno met another Lauren in the corridor, Dominic's son, Richard. He greeted, tickled that the inhuman red eyes were still here. 
they haven't seen each other for a long time. He sneered at the fact that the witch's son pretends to be a real grandson and passionately wants to take the place of the Archduke. He managed to divorce his grandfather to change the will. And he threatened, don't forget to look around. Fabian advised to keep his mouth shut and go and see his grandfather at least once. Who knows if there will be another chance. Archduke Loren fell into eternal sleep at night, surrounded by his children and grandchildren. But no one mourned him. They were only interested in the inheritance and who was the successor. Fabian mentally apologized to his grandfather. He thought he hated him too, but it turned out to be the opposite. The guy aimed to become the Archduke at any cost and destroy this family. Arno stood, angrily crossing his arms on his chest. Everyone was scheming and gossiping around him. He looked really dignified in a long blue cloak. Relatives gossiped that it had been a mistake ten years ago to let the boy go to the academy with the hope that he would never return. At that time, his eminence showed no interest in the young man. But when Fabian returned to the estate after graduation, the grandfather radically changed his attitude and began to regard the boy as his grandson. He suddenly changed his will. What happened to him? Now the last will of the late Archduke will be announced. A man read the will. Frederick Loren, 17th Archduke of the House of Loren, confirms the authenticity of this document. Everything written is valid after his death and the validity of this document. The reader was killed, but who is the successor? And he jumped to the paragraph that was demanded. The position of the 18th Archduke goes to Fabian, the eldest son of Xavier. Everyone turned to the air. He did not express any emotions, neither surprise nor joy. He held himself confidently and a little defiantly. Dominic immediately burst into an angry hysteria and protested that this will was invalid. This is just the delusion of an old lunatic. The reader called the audience to silence because he had not finished reading. And he continued, He has the right to become an archduke only on the condition that he marries a noblewoman within a year. Fabian chuckled. If this condition is not met, the position of archduke will pass to Dominic. Marriage? The boy's red eyes focused in thought. Dominic rehearsed. What did Fabian do to his father? How can the title go to a dirty blood, who should also marry a nobleman? It's all on his conscience. And the Count drowned in the hysteria of fate. Eloise immediately revealed that she had an idea how to solve this problem and offered herself as a bride. Valerie lashed out at her daughter that she would not allow this, and not only because they are relatives. The girl denied that incest was acceptable for aristocrats, and there can be no better title for her. Richard remarked, what noblewoman would marry the son of a witch? Just not full of reason. Eloise was indignant that Richard had humiliated her, and he was surprised that she was not joking. Fabian lived with the Archduke for only three years. It was enough to change his mind and rewrite the will. The guy planned to get this status despite many obstacles. But what to do with marriage? Blood is his only gange. Because his mother really was a sorceress. No noblewoman would want to marry someone who inherited the blood of a witch. That is why the Archduke wrote such a clause in his will. He probably hoped that as a grandson would connect his fate with a powerful family, he would strengthen the position of Lauren's family. In this way, he wanted his grandson to marry without unnecessary bloodshed and inherit the family. Fabian was very saddened by these thoughts. But the boy has his own will. He doesn't want to do his grandfather's will. What should I do? Fabian's goal for the aristocratic family is its destruction. The young man went into his office and called Portis to inform him that according to his grandfather's last will, he would receive the title. The assistant replied that this was a completely expected move. Count Dominic was not worthy of it. Arno also told what the necessary condition is so that the title does not pass to the uncle. We need to find a girl from a noble family who will agree to marry him. It is best that she has no money or anything else and is ready to marry immediately, and it is necessary to act in advance. The Count will not catch the hawk. Poe said it was a puzzle with an asterisk, but in his opinion, exactly the right candidacy is already within the walls of the estate. Fabian guessed who it was about. He remembered the moment when Marcia introduced Larissa to him. Since she has a surname, she is probably a noblewoman. And since he calls his father by his first name, not his title, they are relatives after all. It looks like she ran away from home due to domestic violence, and now she has nowhere to go. So it just suits him. Marcia gently wets her sister's ashen hair with a soft towel. She sits like a porcelain doll and looks straight ahead. 
Is she feeling well? The older sister promises the younger one a variety of fun as soon as Larissa fully recovers. There are too many wounds on Larissa's skin. There are so many of them that the doctor suspected something wrong during the examination. He was not the only one who was surprised. Marsha Bleak knew perfectly well that she would see scars, but she did not think that there would be so many of them. Looking at the girl, the doctor asked if she was sometimes a slave. He is forced to say that slavery is currently prohibited. No, no. Lady Bleak assured the therapist that this was indeed her own younger sister. The doctor stated that these marks are from a beating. Marcia admitted to her sister that she was sure that everything would be fine as soon as they found the Archduke. But on the night when they appeared here, his condition suddenly worsened and he died. At the same moment, she stopped thinking about touching feelings in Fabian's heart. The girl continued to comb Larissa's long braids. How can love blossom under such circumstances? Success is already in the fact that they managed to stay. If they had run away from their father even a day later, they might not have made it to the duchy. Maybe it's a mistake. If she hadn't intervened, everything would have gone according to the script of a fairy tale. But Marcia will take care of Lara and protect her. At that moment, Fabian knocked and asked permission to enter. He asked how her leg was. She thanked for the concern. Much better. And she expressed her condolences by bowing. Thanked it seemed to her that he was somehow tense. Something is wrong? He has to talk to her. Does she have a moment? Yes, of course she can talk. The girl prepared to listen, but Arno asked to go to another room. He needed to say something one-on-one. -on -one. The conversation is not for Larissa's ears? Okay. Marcia asked her sister to wait while she spoke in the next room. If anything, you can come in. As usual, zero reaction. But one day she will answer. In another room, the girl asked what Fabian wanted to say. She was worried. She had an unpleasant feeling. Therefore, she asked what the conversation would be about. Suddenly, he respectfully got down on one knee and put his hand to his heart. What is he going to do? No, no, no. There is only one reason why a man will bend the knee to a woman of lower rank. He continued to carry out his purpose firmly and uttered this. Shall Lady Bleak come out? She immediately cut him off by denying that she couldn't. Her face darkened with excitement. Because his half is not her, but Larissa. He laughed. Not don't want, but can't mean. She said that in this case, it is the same. But what is wrong with him? He is proposing to the wrong person. Doesn't Marcia want to be a duchess? No, of course. She is not a character in a fairy tale who decides to marry a person she met two days ago. Although he is incredibly handsome and wealthy. The lady continued to bend her line. He should propose to Larissa. He doesn't have any feelings for Marcia, does he? But he began to persuade. She will be a full-fledged archduchess now. He agrees to any terms, but it doesn't have to be her, does it? Maybe he should look for someone else. Fabian promises that she will be able to spend any amount and will be able to live as luxuriously as her imagination allows to do as she pleases. It will not matter how much the title of archduchess will be disgraced. His expression showed that it was his dream to destroy imperialism and all its virtues. She thought angrily that it felt like he wasn't suggesting, but persuading. She said she had enough money to live independently. Fabian finally gave up and interrupted the flow of the girl's objections with a hand gesture. No, he was fed up. And he agreed to tell about the current state of affairs. The boy explained that in the morning the Archduke's last will was announced— he will become his successor if he marries a noblewoman within a year. Otherwise, the title will pass to the uncle. Marcia began to guess that someone else might become the prince and clarified how old the uncle is. About 41 and has been married for a long time and has a son who will come of age in a year. So it's not a prince either. And can that man's son inherit the title? But where is the certainty that he is the same? Fabian has to get married within a year. And if so, it should be Larissa... But she's not old enough to get married now. But why does he propose to Marcia? Maybe choose another one, right? Her family is not of sufficient status. This is the point. He became so close. Today his eyes are especially red. He doesn't care how much the title of Archduchess will be humiliated, and he doesn't want his wife to be from an influential family. Fabian wants to take control of the family into his own hands. A powerful wife will only hinder this. Marriage is a weak point for Fabian. Marcia began to consider what would happen if she agreed. Will she be able to get a divorce in this case? He will sign the divorce papers in advance. 
She can use it anytime she wants, but not within the next year to fulfill the condition of the will. Holding her hand on her heart, the girl assured that in the event of marriage, she would keep her marriage vows for three years. He immediately pricked her, and then he will fall in love with Larissa, right? Marcia assured that the time would come, and he himself would like to divorce. Then he wants to ask for something else. About his relatives. His mother was a sorceress. The proof is the color of his eyes. Kinship is revealed in places that cannot be hidden. Marcia imagined how much abuse this boy had suffered. He must have been hated and feared as the son of a witch, as was the case with Marcia, who grew up amid gossip and complaints, as if in chains of thorns, because of what she became a villain. The guy added that because of this, his origin is being questioned. Now she understood why he came with the proposal to her. Due to problems with his origin, he would not be able to find a bride in a year. And Marcia asked for time to think. Fabian accepted this offer and, opening the door, made a fateful meeting. He would return to this matter in the same place at the same time tomorrow. Marcia entered the room that she and Larissa had been allocated for temporary accommodation and grabbed her face. The child was sitting motionless, just as they had left her. The niece of the black person who became the soul of the lady's body recalled that her niece could not sit still. She was extremely restless. Co Ion was remembered with every look at Lara. The older sister conspiratorially leaned towards the younger one. What impression did she have of Fabian? Doesn't she think he's the one they're looking for? Marcia looks at her sister's pretty face and is surprised that Fabian is not the only one who did not fall in love at first sight. The girl reported that Arno proposed to his older sister because he has to get married already this year in order to inherit the title of Archduke. But will divorce when Larissa grows up. If Lara is against it, Marcia will refuse the boy. They will simply run away with her again. And if you don't mind, the offer will be accepted with the condition of mandatory divorce after three years. The sister touched Larissa's hand and said that if you consider the perspective, Lauren is better. And suddenly she noticed that the girl was clutching something in her fist. What is there? What is her sister hiding? Did she have something in her hands before? The girl's face showed an emotion of fear, as if someone wanted to take away her only treasure. Marcia cannot see what is in her sister's hands, but it is something dirty. Therefore, he offers to wash, promising not to punish and not to take away forever, not to give to maids or anyone. The girl, as always, is alarmedly silent, lowering her eyes and pressing her strange value to her chest, so Marcia offers to wash right in front of her eyes without hiding it anywhere does not want to show. Well, okay, I don't want to put pressure on her. And to make this decision known, Marcia moves to the other side of the ottoman. If you don't want to show it, let it be. And then Larissa opened her palms like the wings of a butterfly. A green checkered handkerchief lay on them. This surprised the sister, it was her handkerchief. It was the night before the escape when Marcia went down to her basement to talk. She held a lamp in one hand and a small basket in the other. The basket was lined with this handkerchief, in which gingerbread cookies in the shape of funny little men, girls and boys, were wrapped. It was then that Marcia handed the cookies to the child and offered to get out of her home, which was a prison for the little one. The older girl then said that she would run away alone and offered to join. The lady will come up with the only way to leave the premises inconspicuously. In the middle of the night to climb into a large suitcase that will stand under the stairs in the corner. It is necessary to hide in it and not make any noise. That's when Marcia said that you can take something with you, but not much. Usually girls her age have something to take with them, toys, jewelry. Seeing Larissa then ready to run away, the sister thought that she had not thought of taking anything with her. But after living her life in the basement, she only took this handkerchief. She hid in a suitcase, not even knowing where she would go and what her fate would be, her posture resembled that of a nun in prayer, and she had obviously been waiting for more than one hour to go with her sister, whom she hardly knew. Marcia ran away, holding Larissa's hand. She never had to think about her feelings then, what courage and determination it required from a little girl, and faith in her older sister. Marcia looked into the big green eyes with the thought that she actually lived in hell, but entrusted her whole little mutilated life to her. Emotions of empathy, pity, sympathy, love, gratitude burst into Marcia's soul. She called out Larissa's name and hugged the girl tightly. 
From now on, Larissa is not just a beautiful character from a fairy tale for her. Because she has her own will, she learned to make independent choices in her life, Marcia cried, holding the baby in her arms, and realized that she is a living person. To prevent this from happening, she will protect her younger sister. She will not allow anyone to offend her. Fabian kept his word and arrived exactly at the appointed time. He sat down at a round table with Marcia to agree on mutually acceptable terms. Marcia put on an elegant dress. She looked seriously into his amazing red eyes, put her right hand to her heart and said that she accepted his offer. He looked confident with a faint smile and listened to what she said next. And the girl, saying that she also has certain conditions, handed him a piece of paper. And this is what he read there. Under no circumstances should you bring Larissa to tears. Be close to her and protect her, keeping her at a safe distance from other nobles. Don't touch Marcia's body. When the divorce document is signed, it must take effect immediately. The lady studied the future Archduke's reaction with a careful eye. He read further. Even after the divorce, it is not permissible to harm Larissa and Marcia in any way. He raised a red look at her and noted that there were more points about Larissa. Marcia commented that she chose the most important ones. If these conditions are not met, she will divorce immediately, without waiting for the end of the year. It can be considered as a kind of contract. Do you agree? The guy thought. One more thing. Marcia looked so seductive in this dress in this angle. From his point of view, it was noticeable that the information was unexpected for him. She allowed me to add her points. And he pushed the inkwell towards him calmly and carefully scratched with a pen, adding points that are important to you. He handed the contract to the bride. She glanced with interest at the attached lines. It said that she was to conduct herself in public worthy of an archduchess, and that she could not be divorced for a year subject to the above conditions. Marcia concluded with surprise that where no one could see, she could behave as she pleased. He said that even in the status of archduchess, she can behave as she wants. Fabian verbally added that he has no intention of having children. He considers simply adopting a smart child, because one of his goals is to interrupt the line of the Archduke. The bride pointed her finger at the clause she had written, Do not touch Marcia's body, and said that you should not worry about the children. Marcia, huffing to herself but not hiding the corresponding smile, thought that as expected, he was not such a bright and majestic prince from a fairy tale. Looking at the stylishly dressed young man, she reasoned that outwardly he was flawless, but you would never guess what he was thinking. Fairy tales are written very superficially. If the characters are deeply revealed, the story will lose its fabulousness. Now it doesn't matter if it's someone's fiction, because all the events that are happening to them here and now, before her eyes, are quite real, happening in reality. She will survive. The girl looked seriously and confidently in front of her, she did everything to save herself and Larissa. Marcia imagined herself in a long blue dress with tassels, firmly holding the hand of Larissa in a yellow dress, homely but elegant, hand in hand, and in these joined hands is a green checkered handkerchief. The prince looks at the dream girl. His face is also serious in a non-fabulous way. Okay, terms accepted. According to the contract, she will become his wife. She holds her hand over her heart looking with shining eyes full of confidence. As it happens, the green grass that breaks through the ground after winter hibernation shines with confidence. He gets up from the table, pushing back the chairs. Again, he gets down on one knee with an appeal to Lady Marcia Bleak. Now he has a small box in his hands. He opens it and hands the girl a wedding ring. For some reason, the words, Will you be my woman? All the same, they sound to her as if for the first time. Her pupils are woven with surprise. Half a breath is stuck in her throat. Ah, that's what surprises her, the coincidence that the ring is with a diamond. Every time Marcia looks at him, she will think of Larissa. Larissa, whose tears roll down her cheeks like a hailstorm and barely coming off her face, are formed into amazing multicolored faces. The storm of emotion subsides, and in a few heartbeats, Marcia utters a short word that will forever change the fate of a whole cohort of people. So... Fabian puts a wedding ring on the index finger of his future wife with the words that it has been passed down in the Archduke's family from generation to generation. Marcia understands that this ring is definitely not made from her sister's suffering and appreciates that it fits as if it was made for her. Where does this strange feeling come from? It is difficult for Marcia to hide her excitement. Her skin treacherously became covered with droplets. The eyes look straight, 
as if she were looking into eternity, the prince achieved his goal. He has the expression of a person who is fully satisfied with himself. His smile is confident and balanced. Fabian asks permission to invite his assistant for a few minutes. Marcia is surprised, but of course she doesn't mind. Portis entered with a smile and closed eyes. The boy presented some document to the prince. Fabian sat down at the table and signed with one stroke of the pen. The girl looks with interest. The groom hands her a piece of paper with the words that it is his wedding gift for his chosen one. She reads excitedly. The title is Annex to the Marriage Contract. Then it says Declaration of Divorce. It remains only to sign it. The girl narrows her eyes with emphatic satisfaction and thanks. She also achieved her goal, at least the first stage on the way to the goal. She takes a pen and immediately signs without hesitation. Here, signed. The boys look a bit puzzled. It was as if there was hope that she would not want to divorce. Who knows what will happen next? Fabian seals the marriage contract with a wax seal and gives it to Portis with the words to deliver the envelope to his majesty and return alive as soon as possible. Portis looks at his friend with yellowish-brown eyes through the round lenses of his glasses, hiding the letter in his bosom, and promises to return in three days. He is a person you can trust. Fabian summarizes these negotiations with a concentrated look. From this moment on, Miss Blick is his bride, and as soon as Portis returns with his majesty's signature, Marcia will officially become his wife. The handsome man folded his hands in a lock and, hypnotizing the girl, promised to protect her until their marriage was broken. Marcia looks at her future husband in surprise and fascination. Big breasts rise rhythmically under the pink lace of a seductive dress in time with breathing. A diamond shines coldly on the finger. The contract bride painfully pressed the fingers of the hand with the ring on the palm of the other hand. She almost forgot that he did not belong to her. She looked away. From now until Poe's return is the most dangerous time. Because Fabian will become an archduke when the emperor gives his signature. Maybe it would annoy her, but couldn't she just stay in her room for now? And so the prince and the little fox lived happily ever after. The girl reads a story already known to Larissa. They are not at all bored in the room. The girls have covered themselves with books. For the first time, an emotion of satisfaction appeared on Larissa's face, even double, from fairy tales and delicate sweet desserts. This is the end of the fairy tale. Marcia is also beaming with pleasure as she slams the binding. The room is so light and cozy, in no way compared to loneliness in the basement. Marcia is happy. Her thick braid rests on her shoulders. The girl enjoys looking at her sister's amused face. The girl eats jelly exactly in the tone of the dress. Not giving up hope of talking to her, Marzia asks what kind of desserts she likes, sweet or sour. There is an idea to cook something simple. It is healing for the soul. This situation is really something with something. You can't even swear. My head hurts. It hurts. Can you just run away? But whose thoughts are these? His eminence did not die. His relatives did not come. Marcia has a bad feeling. Who is this young man with a headache? The girl grabs the child's hand and offers to go to another room because something suddenly made her feel sick. The girl with a fake smile tells Larissa to eat neatly and promises to return in a moment, opening the door. Larissa stands confused. A piece of pink jelly glistens in the corner of her mouth. She looks at her sister pleadingly and with hope. The maid asks permission to come in. She has brought food for the lady. Martia invites you to enter the rooms. A man follows the girl carrying the dining table. No, it's a teenager. Blue eyes and clothes betray his noble origin. The gold stitching on the shirt imitates oak leaves, very similar to Fabian. He rested one hand on his side. The other is hidden. Since the directory did not mention Fabian's siblings, this boy is not a close relative. But courtesy should be shown. And she asked whom she had the honor to see. He declared that he came to expel her as the grandson of the owner of the manor. Is she the girl her uncle brought here? He does not see anything aristocratic in her, and her clothes are like those of an old grandmother. She was polite, but he provokes her into a fight. Does he want to say that he's a grandson? No matter how similar he may be, he is not Fabian. But the grandson of the late Archduke is Fabian Loren, is that so? The girl looks flatteringly at the maddened grimace of the boy irritated by this assumption. The child explodes with anger. How can that lowborn be his grandson? He is his only true grandson, Richard. Marcia suddenly realizes who it is. She covers her face with her palm in fright and looks at the boy with wide open eyes. It is certain that this is the son of Fabian's uncle, who had been married for a long time. 
the same descendant, according to her fiancé, who will come of age next year. Marcia compared the appearance of Richard and Fabian in her mind. They are amazingly similar, but it is her future husband who looks more like the prince. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Even if this blue-eyed, self-righteous grandson inherits the title of Archduke, Marcia may not be able to give him her sister. The guy persistently inquired about the relationship between the girl and Fabian. He stands in front of her, rudely holding his hands at his sides. Marcia decides to pretend to be a fool. She is interested in how the boy knew that Fabian had brought her, and she declares with a radiant smile that she has nothing to do with Sir Fabian. Her mother-in-law's grandson is his father-in-law on his father's side. Richard can't digest this nonsense, so he stands as if suffocated. Marcia further deceives that she is going to visit her relatives, and the Archduke allowed her to stay at his place for a short time. When she said that even if Richard was his grandson, she still couldn't go against his permission, the teenager stared at her with a puzzled look. He was completely confused. Suddenly, Richard clenched his fists and came close to the girl and barked that the Archduke was dead. Marcia crossed her arms over her chest in a protective gesture and kept an unmoved expression on her face. He said that the funeral would take place in two days. How can he allow a non-family person to stay here? Marcia only cold-bloodedly thought that such a provocation could quite easily be punished. She pierces the boy with a malevolent gaze, like a rapier. He jabbed a finger at her face with sly insolence. He didn't even know if she was in old-fashioned country clothes or if she was really a noblewoman, because she looks like a plebeian. It touched her. Why should she listen to the abuse of some minor? And she focused on his thoughts. Why did the bastard secretly bring a commoner to the estate? You can't hide your blood. Marcia questioned the quality of vaunted home education, and she commented out loud that the behavior was like that of a court boy, not like Sir Fabian. He exploded with anger. Marcia, screaming in an icy tone, added, If he finished, then couldn't he leave? Her arms were still crossed in a defensive position and stopped spewing negativity. The girl confidently put her palm to the boy's back, thus pushing him out the door. Richard was surprised. What a negative. But the next wave was more surprising. He noted that the dinner was for two. The Archduke's scion turned and pointed his finger impolitely again in the lady's direction. Marcia scornfully complained that she was still growing, so she was eating a lot. How old is she to still grow? And the table is clearly set for two people. Fabian will come to this room, won't he? Marcia repeated emphatically that they had nothing to do with Fabian. Her face showed obvious irritation. The little one got into his favorite pose, resting his hand on his side. Then who will come here? He won't go anywhere until he gets a comprehensive answer. How to dry it? Can pretend to be crazy and start threatening? A ray of sunlight slid along the blade of a knife on the table. No, we need a more practical way. Maybe drop food on it? Why did he keep silent? She followed his stunned look. It can't be. Oops, the sister entered the room. The girl called her name. Larissa looked blankly at the teenager, carefully holding on to the door leaf. Her pink dress was also quite plain. Marcia came to calm the girl, who was probably afraid to stay alone in the room for so long. She apologized, holding out her hands. Richard blushed and asked if her name was Larissa, and confusedly added that it was nice to meet him. Marcia interrupted him by saying that it was her sister. The lady put out her arms, protecting her sister like a hen, and cried out that she begged her pardon for being rude. But could he go away? Buchim's sister has caught a cold and cannot speak. If he doesn't want to get infected, he'd better get out. And she started pushing the bewitched boy out the door. The Archduke's grandson excitedly asked if she had caught a cold and blamed the dirty commoners for it. Marcia angrily added that that's why he was leaving. Larissa looked at the boy touchingly. The guy is stuck in the door. Wait a second. You have to worry about the sick. He will call the doctor. His demeanor was assertive, but diametrically opposed to the brashness of two minutes ago. Larissa sent the young man away with a cute, sad look of emerald eyes. Marcia continued to push him out, assuring them that they already come to them once a day. Finally, she managed to slam the door loudly and sharply. He muttered a meek, goodbye. His icy eyes warmed noticeably. Cheeks were burning. The girls finally sat down to eat. Marcia was pleased with herself and persuaded her sister to eat to her heart's content. Good thing Richard left before the food got cold. Their meal was interrupted by the question of whether the lady was there. It was a girl calling from behind the door. 
Marcia got up from the table and went to open it. This is the maid. The lady asked excitedly what happened. The girl produced the letter she still held, saying that Sir Richard had sent them an invitation. It is very strange. They just met. Sealed in wax, decorated with arabesques and monograms, said it was an invitation to Miss Larissa and her sister to dinner tomorrow. The groom chose a red silk tie that reached his eyes. He was also impressed by this invitation and said that the girls had the right to refuse. He continued that it is not necessary to have dinner with his family members. From the expression on the girl's face, one could understand that she had asked Arno for advice. She didn't want to go either. It is written there. You must come. If not, will they be left alone? It won't be too bad if he finds where Larissa is hiding, right? But if at the same time he arranges a debacle with breaking the door and banging, then problems cannot be avoided. Fabian offered to move them to other rooms. Marcia replied that everything is fine. There is no need to fuss. If she sits quietly, nothing will happen. Will Fabian be around? Yes, it will be. But Larissa needs peace. Marcia added that in that case, she would appear at the invited dinner for a short time and expressed her hope that everything would be fine with her next to Fabian. The bridegroom looked at her with the sad eyes of a man who has been entrusted with an excessive responsibility, which he will bear despite any storms and worries. She thought she had said too much. He reassured that everything was fine and announced that the papers with the emperor's signature should arrive the next day. Marcia was delighted. Great but we still have to live through tomorrow. Fabian reassured the girl that she can do everything as she sees fit. If necessary, he will manage everything. She looked at him with sympathy. Is he not resting at all? A lot of work? He denied, although he really looked exhausted, and apologized for dragging her into this story. Marcia said that it was okay. The main thing is for Larissa to be safe, the secret bride of a potential archduke shone with hope. When she marries Fabian these people will become her family. I think she should find out what kind of dough they are made of. Something is wrong? Nothing. In short, in two days, Portis will be back with the papers. Until then, he asks her to be patient. And he turned to her with a broad back, looking away. The lady was worried that she did not have an appropriate outfit for dinner. She did not take an evening dress with her. The fabulous Marcia would be dressed stunningly and without fail with long snow-white gloves. But her task is not to stand out. Even if she is in pulled-up clothes, she will completely rule for a commoner and will not bother her with conversations. No one would guess that she is the future Archduchess. In the room, she saw a hundred shining pink lilac and gold boxes with bows. They covered half the room. Are these Fabian's gifts? The note said that he could not write earlier and asks to accept a small gift from the future Archduke. Oops, he noticed that she didn't have the right outfit. So caring. Marcia called her sister and said that Fabian had sent it for Larissa. She laughed heartily. Meanwhile, the girl seems to have learned to show another emotion. Surprise. Well, let him open it. These dresses and shoes are almost the best of the popular ones at the moment. After all, he is wealthy, so he does not pay attention to the cost. Suddenly, the maid's voice was heard from behind the door. A gift from Richard had arrived for the lady. Another? The young gentleman sent a green box. Inside was an extravagant outfit. A pink top with lamps and flares at the same time, a green floral bottom, white and yellow lace. What kind of village outfit? Everything shines. It must have been extremely expensive. And he offers to dress up Larissa in this. The girl told her sister that she could ignore the box and wear one of Fabian's gifts. A white dress made of soft fabric with a bluish skirt and a soft yellow bow emphasized the loneliness of the child. In addition, silk stockings with delicate sewing, little blue shoes. A yellow embroidered openwork ribbon in braids is the final touch of the image. Larissa added a hat at her discretion. Marzia was moved. What a beauty she is, and something else to measure? The girl looked excited. Marcia took small hands in her own. In the future, she will have many more outfits. Let her be greedy, crying and smiling, like an ordinary child. Let him say what he wants. She would hear her wishes. You just need to get used to it a little. Marcia smiled kindly. The girl looked into her sister's sad eyes and thought, when will this child finally be able to smile innocently? The girl in the fairy tale marveled at the light and looked for the source of its origin. 
She carefully stepped on some clouds and spread her hands on others. Usually there was no such thing in front of her. All the light she saw came from a small candlestick, which was not enough even for reading. Although there was a whole library around, she was always in the dark. He remembered the evil father against the background of the barred semi-basement window. She had to shed tears forever, although she believed that this horror would end someday. But she couldn't cry anymore. She should get out of the clouds as only pain is felt. I didn't want to get out of them anymore. However, the lady addressed her by name. She asked if she liked how beautifully everything was blooming around her. What flowers does she like more? What does she want to eat? Scones with grape jam or strawberry cake? Kind of boring. Can you read a fairy tale? Which one would she like to listen to? She softly calls her name, always asks her opinion. But why? Why does she keep asking? She led out of a hopeless place. She gave sweets that she tasted for the first time, saved from bad people and promised to always protect. I want to answer her with warm words, but behind the clouds she cannot speak. Why does she keep calling? It is not clear why she is so nice to her. One day everything will be clear. Lauren's family is gathered around the dining table in the living room. The food was not yet served, but everything was already served. Marcia noted that the table is tighter than she thought. It will not be possible to sit down in the middle. Damage. Her place is at the very end of the table. Last night, Fabian talked about his relatives. The girl next to him is Eloise Conrad, Fabian's cousin. Suddenly, Richard exclaimed, What is that other outfit on her? He was sending a gift, wasn't he? He was disappointed, Marcia thought. What a slob, trying to look like an adult. And she thanked out loud for the generous gift and pretended to be surprised that the dress was just for this dinner. Indeed, he asked to dress her. Marcia read his opinion that the dress would match the color of his eyes. He crossed his arms on his chest indignantly. The girl wondered if he seriously thought she would wear it. Did he want everyone to think she had no taste? Valerie asked Richard who this girl was. The woman looked with sad blue eyes and brought the cutlery closer to the salmon steak. Judging by her outfit, Valerie continued, She is of low birth, who would be an ideal match for Fabian. Does she sometimes not know her? Richard nervously announced that it was his guest, and he was confused how to present her. Eloise tried to help him. Is she a distant relative of her brother's assistant? He said that's right. The girl told the same legend about herself that she told Richard the day before, that she was going to visit her relatives and was allowed to stay in the place for a couple of days. Eloise scornfully remarked that no matter how she got here, how could she appear so shamelessly at the Archduke's family dinner? Isn't she one of those who clings to more successful relatives? Since she already spoke for it herself, Fabian said to Eloise as he entered, Lauren's family is not without such people. The girl was hooked by such a transparent hint. Fabian apologized for being late. Protects as promised. It's calmer now. Valerie's daughter got angry, who thought to herself, how dare this foreclosure be exposed? Let him pick up his tail and not shine. Eloise uttered as if she had farted into a puddle. Oh, ha ha, how are they, born of noble blood, different from these people? And someone thought to himself, me too, noble blood. Although half of it is in it? Valerie came in with the words, how do lowborns know about decency? Who doesn't know who he got so lucky once he invited a commoner to dinner? Dominic interjected, what about her daughter? And, in his mind, that he only knows how to lash out with words. Marcia concluded that there was absolutely no order between them. A real quarrel took place, not over food. Now it is clear why there is such a rush to get married. Richard stared at Marcia with his eyes, thinking that already this time the girl delicately inquired, does he want to tell her something? Dominic's son was furious that Lady Bleak had come alone without her sister. Does he have problems with his memory? The girl burst out about herself. She clearly said the day before that Larissa was unwell, but she said out loud with a smile, she has not fully recovered yet, so she is resting. He frowned and asked if the doctor visited her daily. I saw that the day before she was already getting up. Why did you go to bed today? The cold does not go away in a day, the girl said dispassionately. She is also surprised, and yawned, pretending to be bored, finally resigned. It's disgusting. It's the plebeians who don't even follow the banal rules of etiquette forever. Eloise Marcia read the opinion, thinking that it was good not to bring Larissa to these jackals. What are they forever gnawing at? 
Dominic snapped so that Valerie would not spoil her only daughter in the hands of an unkind person, to which she declared that the brother himself was panicked that the title would not go to him, but to Fabian. But everything is clear and transparent. Marcia decided not to pretend anymore, to make her feel comfortable and said that she was asking for her forgiveness, but she was not feeling well, she was going to leave. And suddenly she heard the self-suggestion of a girl in a dress and an apron, a maid. Don't make a mistake, the girl with a tray said to herself. Be as natural as possible. This dessert should go to Fabian, and if it is revealed, you have to ask Madame for an additional fee. Marcia began to analyze. Emma Lauren sits silently and does not react to anything. Marquise Conrad is emphatically relaxed, but can't quite hide her intentions. She's too focused on that dessert. Lady Blick pretended not to be upset with the cook and collided so that she knocked the tray out of her hands. The maid rushed to apologize for ruining the dress. It's okay. She has something to change into. Mrs. Conrad could not hide her emotions. She mocked Lady Blick, who had fallen, as if she did not know how to wear dresses or was only learning to walk like a baby. Fabian ran up to the bride to ask if everything was okay, offered his hand, she took advantage of the close distance and, covering herself with a laugh, warned anyone to eat anything today. Someone touched the desserts. He hid his surprise. He was glad that she didn't get stuck anywhere. And he dared to take her to his room, ordered to serve new desserts. Valerie expressed confidence that it was probably the only dress. Marcia, saying that it seems that she will not last long, sat down at the table opposite Larissa. The food is still warm. Were those desserts poisoned? She remembered the boy in the market who committed the assassination attempt. And there was poison on the knife? By sabotaging Valeria's attempts, Fabian is unlikely to be saved, because Dominic expects to become an archduke. If Larissa becomes the archduchess, then the threat will hang over her too. It's good that not now. It turned out that the hateful ability of the eldest daughter of the fairy came in handy. Until the divorce, she will be able to protect Fabian. And the groom, returning to his office, wondered how the girl learned about the attempts for the second time. How did you notice something strange without tasting desserts? As if she knew in advance. Hiding something. The next day in the Lauren's estate, the church announced the farewell to the Archduke. The day was gloomy, as if nature itself was grieving. Marcia looked at the people in mourning. She did not know anyone except the Lorenz. Someone wondered how she even dared to show up at their grandfather's funeral. This is Eloise, assumes that the girl expects to take possession of Fabian and considers how to achieve this. She laughs at the thought that Bleak has no idea who she contacted. Marcia understands that she is the apple of everyone's eye, but it involves the enjoyment of everyone finding out that it was Fabian who proposed to her. Her black-gloved hands clenched into fists. Richard came up and asked, surprised, if Lady Bleak had decided to attend the morning ceremony as well. Marcia replied that she was simply forced. The boy asked where this luxurious morning dress came from. The girl honestly admitted that this outfit was prepared for her by Fabian, and mockingly added, if the guy is looking for Larissa, then she has not fully recovered, so she could not come. The boy exploded with anger. He didn't ask this, and it doesn't bother him at all, and he blushed to the tips of his ears. It is not for nothing that they say that crying indicates fear or other vulnerability. In her mind, she was amused that Richard was being deceitful. Let him forgive already. It is a sign to someone else, and too beautiful for him. None of those present are talking to Fabian, the girl noted. Obviously, they do not consider him a candidate for the role of Archduke. What is he thinking about? It is good that the content of the will is not yet known to everyone, approached her fiancé and patted him on the shoulder in a friendly manner. The girl noticed that the guys were having a casual, friendly conversation. Maybe you should talk to this little guy after the funeral. There is hope to learn more about the future husband. The funeral in a solemn atmosphere lasted about two hours. There were a lot of white lilies and chrysanthemums. When all the relatives said goodbye, Marcia also came. Laying the chrysanthemums, the girl mentally addressed the deceased that she is the future wife of his grandson, and she is very sorry that she took advantage of the Archduke's last will and thanks him for accepting it. Marcia swore with her sister to protect Fabian, therefore, he can sleep peacefully, and she folded her hands in prayer in elegant lace gloves. Soon, while drinking tea in the living room, 
the girl remembered that she wanted to talk to a red-haired friend of her fiancé. Her head was splitting from the dark thoughts of those around her. That's why she went out to the balcony to breathe. Fabian noticed her absence and went out to warn her that Marcia would not catch a cold in the pouring rain. She explained that everything was fine, she just wanted to freshen up. Is it the weather or the funeral? His eyes were even redder than usual, like a magical resistance. The boy said that everything was really not so bad, catching fresh drops from the heavy gray sky with his palm. The newlyweds exchanged news about Portis. The telegram that had arrived the day before said that he would soon arrive. The girl asked how he plans to announce the engagement. Suddenly, he hugged her sharply. A shot rang out. She felt with her hand that blood ran down his back from his right shoulder. I took her place from the bullet. The next moment, he reached for his revolver. She asked the fool if he was okay. Then she asked him not to move, trying to understand where exactly he was wounded. The girl was trembling. He pressed her against him, took aim, and fired. Thoughts nearby were confused. Mess, how did he know he was here? Damn, hit the leg, the blood doesn't stop, you have to run. Come on. The girl tried to figure out whose thoughts these were. People in the living room were trying to figure out where the shot came from. Women were crying. Fabian rushed to catch up. Marcia tried to convince him to treat the wound first, but he said it was just empty. How empty? He lost so much blood. Marcia was very worried. The prince stepped over the railing and jumped down. Someone told the girl behind her back not to worry about him. It was the redhead who spoke. He added with a smile that even if Fabian had jumped from the very roof of this place, he would still have remained unharmed and will return without a single scratch. Marcia turned in the direction where Fabian had run, and yet he has a serious wound. The interlocutor advised her not to worry too much and better introduce herself. He called himself Leonid Orlov and offered his hand. She said her name and suddenly she felt like an electric shock. She was attacked by thoughts that she should not have done this and that she did not want to die. Lady Blyke fell unconscious. They called a doctor. The girl regained consciousness in bed. She was laid to rest in mourning clothes. The maid next to her was happy. Marcia was struggling with an excruciating headache and trying to figure out why she passed out. The girl remembered how it all started and shouted in fright. What happened to Fabian? The maid reassured him that he was already being helped and asked him to swallow some drink. The killer committed suicide before being caught. Fabian's wounds were not serious. What a relief. So that shocking cry was the voice of the killer's heart at the moment of suicide. I haven't heard that before. The girl blamed herself for not hearing anything before the shot. Maybe she couldn't distinguish the most important thoughts because there was too much negativity around. Stop. It can't be. And how did the killer not have an evil intention? As the murder was ordered, maybe she won't hear these thoughts. But the boy on the square didn't personally have hatred either. Will she be able to protect in such cases? Fabian came and kindly asked if everything was okay with his dear. She asked, and how is he himself? Why did he call her dear? He laughed and said that it was just a scratch. He's glad she's okay. The girl saw two more men in the doorway. Portis is back. Next to him stood a new acquaintance, Leonid and the maid. Poe was still in his short raincoat and looked conspiratorially, adjusting his glasses. So, the key moment has come. Marcia guessed that in a few minutes she would have to wear a wedding ring. Fabian called to your honor. He has an important announcement to make. Dear Count Lauren and Marquise Conrad were very busy receiving eloquent condolences. So, he has news. When they said that the message concerned the execution of the Archduke's last will... The relatives were shocked. Dominique roared. How dare Fabian speak his father's words with his dirty mouth? Valerie nodded. Fabian remarked that this was the time to say that if his aunt had wanted him to be silent, she would have chosen a more skilled marksman. Marquise covered herself with a cold sweat. How could he even think of her? At the moment when the Count pounced on his nephew with his fists, the gendarme came and stopped Dominic's hand with a skillful movement. No violence. Fabian continued, yes, the title of Archduke does not pass into the hands of his uncle according to the will, and he gets it, because he did not forget the condition that he must marry an aristocrat within a year. The Count was bewildered. Does the nephew think that someone will give him his daughter as a wife? How could anyone in their right mind agree to marry the son of a witch? Fabian said, unfortunately, he has already fulfilled this condition, 
and he pointed to Lady Marcia Blick, who was sitting next to her, not having the strength to get up from excitement. A cup of tea fell out of Dominic's hands and broke. Eloise darkened like a forgotten peeled potato. She could not believe that her cousin was already married. The lawyer announced the news in an official tone. The couple got married three days ago. According to the last will of the deceased, Fabian will become the next Archduke. The Archduke introduced his legal wife, Archduchess Marcia Lauren. But instead of applause, other words were heard. Is there any evidence of the noble origin of this woman? Even if the previous Archduke has gone to another world, his grandson cannot behave as he pleases. The girl heard the revelation. Stupid Dominic. Once I was going to remove a competitor, I had to see it through to the end. Nothing would be more complicated than it is now. As she thought, the real criminal is the Count. Dominic blackened with anger. People don't get married with words. A document is a certificate. This is their usual fornication. Fabian said with irritation that here is their marriage certificate, and submitted a document with the signature of His Majesty the Emperor and certified by a lawyer. Now Marcia spoke. Yes, she is from a noble family. The founder of their family received the title of Baron and Territory from King Herman III. Her surname is registered in the Royal Chancellery. Richard was surprised. She said that she was a relative of the assistant. This means that she is a commoner. Marcia was surprised in response. Did the boy believe? She said the first thing that came to mind. Fabian declared that he is now the master of this house. He welcomes everyone who has come to say goodbye to the previous Archduke Frederick, and how the host cannot allow the guests to feel uncomfortable, and asks uncle and aunt to leave the premises as soon as possible as soon as they prove their innocence in the attempt on the Archduke. Both stood as if drenched in water, surprised by the news. Under the explosion of caustic insults, the prince apologized and led his wife out of the hall by the hand. She shouted at him to stop. He promised not to touch her at all. But what about leading by the hand at formal evenings and dancing? Well, okay. What is included in the concept of etiquette is permissible. He believes that holding hands is also etiquette. Marcia was upset. If the touch of the hand is too much for her, what about the previous contact? He grabbed her as he shot, but it was for the purpose of protection. There is no guarantee that cases requiring contact will not recur. Marcia apologized and asked to forget what she said. She lowered her head. In this case, they need to set boundaries. Marcia asked what was meant. Permissible contact limits. He suggested conspiratorially. How about excluding only intimate activities? The Archduchess was very embarrassed, but she agreed to such restrictions. Didn't he say he was not guilty? First they need to talk. Two gendarmes led the Count by the arm. Where are they taking him? Let them be released immediately. Richard scratched his head, looking at his father's hysteria, and asked a rhetorical question. When will peace reign in this family? Then he asked where Eloise was going. She was sitting sullenly. The time had run out. She looked so miserable after learning about Fabian's marriage. Nervously tapping the fan, Eloise was angry. How dare the dirty blood reject her, despite her readiness to go against her mother, waiting for him. If he expected that she would get away with such a thing, then he is greatly deceived. She tugged at her skirt with force. She will not forgive this. Richard continued to anger his cousin. Yesterday at dinner, he saw her seeking Fabian's attention. Isn't that role his wife's? The girl snapped so that Richard would keep an eye on himself. He saw how his uncle was taken out. And didn't they do the same with the aunt? The same. But now is not the time for mutual resentment. If they have a son, then Richard will not become an archduke. And this probability is very high. How tense Eloise is. Since his father was the second son, Richard never dreamed of the title of archduke. Not that he did not regret anything. And the image of Larissa appeared in his thoughts. From that moment on, Richard decides to look at Fabian differently. Who would have thought that he would get married on the day the will was announced? He recognizes him as the rightful heir. Eloise could not believe that her cousin had changed so much. Meanwhile, the boy approached the silent Emma and told her to go without him. The mother was surprised that he planned to stay. Richard laughed that the new owner only showed his aunt and uncle at the door. Nothing threatens him himself. After the funeral, Although Fabian allowed the guests to stay as long as they wished, no one stayed a day. Everyone found reasons to go, actually because of the desire to spread the news. Richard remained. Marquis Leonid Orlov also remained. 
He offered Fabian help, which he did not refuse. Marcia was not against Richard, until he tried to go to her sister. If difficulties arise, she is under Fabian's protection, and he will personally ask him to leave. There was a knock at the door. There were two people at the door, a maid and a butler. He said that he had received a letter from Mr. Wee. She thanked Alfred and allowed him to address her less formally. Marcia overheard the maid's thoughts that the Archduke had only recently died, and there was already a mess. There was a woman in a country outfit living there. The lady assumed that the nobles were watching, hoping to turn the events in their favor, because she is only the hostess here for the second day, and she asked the butler if her husband was very busy. Not really. The girl decided to decline the invitation, but to keep the letters just in case. She would suddenly reject something important. And she went to Fabian's office. Isn't he busy? I didn't even look at who came. I noticed two swirls in his hair. They say that such people marry twice. The Archduchess wished her husband good morning and put a box with letters. I asked if there was a moment. He said that he could be distracted for a while and open the box. What kind of letters? These are their invitations. She asks to check whether there is an invitation from an important person. She admitted that she still has many shortcomings and asks that he receive letters that are unacceptable for the Archduchess. Because she has only had fun at balls so far, if she behaves the same way, it will be grief in the family. In addition, she is in this position only prematurely, does not want to behave like a full member of the family. In three years, she will leave, and Larissa will become a real Archduchess. And there is another request for my sister. Larissa needs a good doctor. The current therapist is great, but she needs a psychotherapist who can heal her emotional wounds. Fabian said that he had not heard that anyone engaged in such a practice. Marcia noted that she had guessed that. This world had not reached such a level of development to treat the psyche. If it was about emotional scars, you could try to summon witches. Fabian Marcia heard a bad opinion. He stopped himself in such considerations. Marcia thought that since his mother was doing something like that, he should probably know a little about it, too. It will be necessary to ask, somehow. And she added aloud, A doctor who knows how to keep a secret is enough. Fabian believes that Dr. Bellman, in his personal opinion, is trustworthy. Does this mean his loved one has something to hide? But this is not an interrogation. Could she have experienced any violence? So Fabian already knows something, of course, but she wants to keep it a secret. Did he learn about it from the doctor? However, it is good that Larissa's ability to cry diamonds is not known. No, the doctor did not tell Fabian. He understood himself. When I saw a lying father and how they run away from him, the sister was trembling with terror and could not speak. And when they were safe, they asked for medicine. If Marcia does not want to tell, she has the right to remain silent. But if he can't do it on his own, he's ready like a man to lend a shoulder. Now she is his wife and he will behave like her husband. At these words, the girl felt that her heart was fluttering. And she asked again, is he not only ready to provide a doctor, but also to help in the future? And then he said that he could help in practice. He said it casually, and by the way, reading the letters in parallel, he explained, this means that he can take care of everyone who mocks Larissa and won't be as indecisive as some at funerals. Marcia was afraid that he was going to kill them. On the other hand, nothing will threaten Larissa. She wants this. People who abuse children should not live. But then Marcia will have to pay for her sins. She did not do as her father did with her brother directly, but allowed the nanny to do it for her own benefit. Fabian stood up. Could it be that they insulted not only Larissa, but also herself? Oh, no, no, it does not. She can be honest with her husband. Marcia assured that everything is fine. It is enough to adhere to the marriage contract. Do not leave Larissa in the hands of other aristocrats. Forget his word under any circumstances. She is grateful. And how is his health? because his face is pale. He is not so weak that he will fall from one shot. He wanted to convince her and began to unbutton his shirt. She blushed like a boiled crab and asked not to be naked in front of her. She is only worried about the loss of blood and wants to be grateful for the protection. All right. The wound was sewn up. Get well soon. If you think about it, even after the accident, he remained whole and unharmed. If she does not plan to fulfill the duties of the Archduchess, then she can act as she pleases. He has to be attentive to the events that they should attend as a couple. Okay, she'll honor the contract. Marcia noticed that Larissa was still eating, although it was long past dinner time. The maid began to make excuses that she had tried to persuade Lady Larissa to begin the meal, but had no success. 
It seems that she did not eat because Marcia was not around. But why doesn't she look into his eyes and keep silent? The fact that she only eats with her sister shows trust. It would be good to live together all our lives. The older sister asked if Lara had finished her dinner and if she wanted to go for a walk. She took her hands in hers. We need to help her get used to this world. Does Larissa like the outdoors? Girls envelop the evening sun in the evening peach haze. The girl is holding a hat that is trying to catch the wind. Ladies admire the sunset. Marcia tenderly hugs her sister. Pleasant weather, the sun does not burn at all, is not it? How I want her to learn all the good things in the world, and how artistically trimmed those trees are. And there is a statue of an angel. How amazing! It is necessary to give her the opportunity to feel the warmth of the soul. Well, let's admire the daffodils. Their flowering means the arrival of spring. She should become like other children. The flowers smell nice. Does she not want to smell? Lovely scent, isn't it? It was a good idea to go for a walk. When she was locked in the basement, life passed by. And she tasted sweet then for the first time. From now on, she will see a lot of interesting things. Doesn't he want to eat already? Just here near the fountain. Marcia opened the picnic basket. The wind carried someone's words. The Archduchess was recognized. This is Richard. He said that he did not expect to see them again. He didn't want it to end so badly. Why is he still here if the funeral is over? She walks with her sister. And since they are already talking about the grandfather, she does not see a shadow of sorrow on his face. He is in mourning and wears mourning. Somehow she did not see his tears. He only came to say hello. Why such passions? He's going to the academy soon anyway. Well, he can rest at Lauren's place before he leaves, but she and her sister would leave Sir Richard immediately. He caught up and asked permission to lead them to the room. Strange behavior for this boy. Why? This is already her home. There is no need for an escort. Dvoretsky has already shown everything. She can handle it herself. Before they left, shouldn't she formally introduce him to her sister? They have become relatives, it must be admitted. A thought seeped between the sentences. It was disgusting that Fabian had become an archduke. Wow, can he do logic? I'm sorry, Larissa still. And the girl looked into his eyes. This is such a turn. Okay, the lady doesn't mind. But he has to be polite. He is confused and blushing. He is right as Dominic's son. Limits must be established, because her status in the family is higher. Fabian wouldn't put up with that kind of attitude, would he? Richard is the Earl's only son, but her sister predeceased him. So Marcia refuses to introduce Larissa to someone who is incapable of behaving in a manner worthy of his status. Richard straightened his tie and apologized for his bad manners and promised to be more careful in the future. At the same time, his face was red. Then Marcia turned to her sister. She asks for permission to introduce her to a new friend. This charming lady is her younger sister, Larissa Bleak. And the person in front of her is the Archduke's cousin, Richard Lauren. Why did you blush so much? Has he always been like this? Richard said that he is the youngest member of the family and can be called simply by his first name. She wants to make a good impression, thought the girl with a smile. This boy is even kind of cute. Marcia explained that Larissa's voice had not yet returned. Richard was surprised that she had such a bad cold, and I thought to myself that the poor man could lie down from a common cold. Marcia thought back that the bad guys just couldn't afford the treatment. But in the case of Larissa, everything is different. Only she is not able to tell about it. Well, will they go? All the best. Ah, well. The boy passed the girls at least with a glance and froze with a raised palm and an indescribable sadness on his handsome face. The elder sister thought that it would be good for him to lose interest in the girl as soon as possible. The girl's wounds are much deeper than the doctor imagined. Probably Marcia already heard from his eminence. She will not have any problems with cognitive functions. She needs nutritious food and walks. Recently, this is how the older sister takes care of the younger one. Perfectly. The doctor added, It's not certain, but there could be seizures if she goes through something similar to a previous traumatic experience. She needs to be constantly reminded that the traumas are in the past. Now the main thing is what is happening here and now. During these three years, they will leave the past where it belongs and build the future. If Larissa wants, maybe they will go to the kitchen and prepare delicacies together. So they did. They look appetizing. Cooks highly praised the girl's talent. When the girl had prepared cookies, she brought a roll to her older sister in the same handkerchief in which she herself had received sweets for the first time.
The cook promised to bring the rest of the cookies to the girl's room. Marcia apologized for the trouble and thanked her. The cook assured that they themselves liked the process and how the atmosphere in the kitchen became livelier. At the cook's suggestion to cook something else, Larissa soon nodded in agreement, so she began to express her own opinion. The girl offered her sister to have dinner in the dining room. The girl wants to do everything possible to expand Larissa's worldview and form a feeling of home, getting used to the place. Marcia looked at her sister as if she were the future wife of Prince Fabian, a person to whom she is ready to entrust the girl. Everything follows the plot of the book. He has already become a prince. But if the happy ending of the story requires a wedding, Larissa must make such a decision on her own. Therefore, after Marcia's divorce from Fabian, the younger sister somehow has to take her place. And right now, the most important task is to heal her mental injuries. One day, I would like to have a regular get-together. Walking along the corridor, the girls heard a dialogue between Richard and Leonid, who were talking about school in the dining room. Rudy said that his candidacy was approved by the majority of elite students. Now he has become the president. Marcia introduced her sister to the descendant of the Orlov family. Larissa frowned in response. The older girl defiantly ignores Richard, which makes him terribly angry. When asked by the Archduchess what he was doing alone, Leonid replied that he had spent the day reading, and now he decided to have a small snack. Richard pointed out that it was etiquette to share a meal together, and the girl protested that the last time the dinner had gone wrong. And to change the subject, she thanked Leonid for his help on the balcony. Suddenly, Larissa loudly praised the soup. She herself was surprised at the sound of her voice, but she continued to eat. Richard was staring at the girl in fascination. His gaze was caught by the jealous older sister, and she thought with irritation how this prank annoyed her. Enough to complain! Larissa will marry a prince! The girl asked what it was about when she and her sister entered. Leonid said that about the time of his studies at the academy, the same one from which Fabian graduated and where Richard is going. When Marcia asked how old Fabian was when he graduated, he himself came up and answered, 19. The Archduke joked that when he asked where his friend was, he was told that Leonid was spending time with his wife. Leonid laughed and asked to express himself not so ambiguously. Isn't it his own fault that he hasn't appeared at the table since the wedding itself? Marcia was surprised that her husband hadn't had dinner yet. He suggested having dinner together in the dining room. She laughed and replied that she did not insist. The Archduchess thought about the fact that she did not want to distract her husband from his affairs. Although she should be responsible for cooking as a housewife, her conscience gnaws at her for refusing to do it. Leonid tried to diffuse the atmosphere by asking how they met, appropriate in the presence of both the culprits of the recent changes in the place. Both look at the interlocutor without much enthusiasm to answer. Where to start? Marcia was at a loss for words, and Fabian wisely said that she had saved his life just by passing through. The Archduchess was as happy as a child. No misunderstandings thanks to his wonderful explanation. The girl looked at her knight with delight. But Fabian added that he immediately fell in love with her at that very moment. This caused a violent reaction. She turned red and froze with her mouth open, and Richard asked in surprise, What? Finally, Marcia got a hold of herself, although she was still blushing, and noted with satisfaction that the explanation that it was love at first sight was impeccable. She remembered their first dinner together, when she was sure he was only helping them to keep the noise down, because there was no other explanation. Marcia noticed that the girl was looking inquiringly, maybe because he doesn't understand the meaning of the word love. If Larissa says something again, the sister may not get away with it. Now the Archduchess was filled with anger faster than with wine. Was it necessary for him to lie? He saw that she was coming up with an explanation. Leonid was surprised. Is it true? The child was nowhere to be found. And after well, and, um, Marcia said, yes. The red-haired man wondered, how could his friend betray him so much that he became indebted for his life to the lady he had just met? The prince told how the killer, disguised as a vagabond, targeted him. But thanks to the fact that his wife became a boy across the road, Fabian was able to catch him. Was it a woman's intuition? Marcia laughed that it was not quite so. It was just a coincidence because it was not intuition, but her ability. She wanted to say something more, but her husband interrupted her. 
He thinks that it was not just a coincidence, but fate in its own person. Because that fake homeless man put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a poison dagger. Stop! Marcia was surprised. She did not share her guess with anyone. They definitely didn't discuss that case. And if a man checks her? She decided to act as if she was hearing this for the first time. She pretended to be surprised, playing along with the prince. Lord, have mercy. A poison knife? At the same one? She did not suspect. If only we knew earlier. She felt ashamed of her bad acting. Richard also noticed that the game was bad. He asked what it was now, pretense, but no one will even look at a simple homeless person. How did she know that there was a poison dagger in her pocket? She goes on to lie that it's just a coincidence. She had no idea what exactly was in his pocket. It was already true. And she didn't know Fabian was Lauren until she came here, and it's true. So she was following someone she didn't even know? Richard couldn't sit still in surprise. Marcia suddenly blurted out that he was handsome. Richard blacked out, and Leonid accidentally spat out what he had just put in his mouth. Orloff, wiping himself with a napkin, mused aloud about saving life, love at first sight. Fabian decided to finish them all and added that this was not all. What did she know about the business he had recently invested in? I recognized the development as soon as I glanced at the prototype. Leonid laughed loudly and commented that this is an incredible girl. The friend summed up that Fabian could not help but fall in love with her. She is very flattered by this characterization in this context. Fabian couldn't concentrate on his work. He kept wondering if Marcia was always so cheerful, even if she tried to take care of other people's interests. But to him, she seemed like an ordinary girl with an insincere smile. He still couldn't figure out what was on her mind. How could such a person give off such an innocent smile? And what kind of stupid game was that? People are such complex creatures that you want to watch them. So she knew about everything and only pretended. She knew what the pretend homeless man was going to do and why he kept his hands in his pockets. Leonid entered and asked what his friend was thinking about, so that he stopped writing. Something wrong with the documents? Fabian glanced at his last entry. It read nonsense. It is suspected that resources are running low, so he requests that a real smile be sent as soon as possible. The friend laughed and asked, Is his head full of thoughts about his woman? But the prince did not want to admit the obvious. Rudenki suggested simply talking to the woman instead of screwing himself up. Because clearly, something is eating him from the inside, because they see each other only at the dinner table. Not that he wanted to meddle in their affairs, but could it be that they still hadn't had their first wedding night? These words came as a complete surprise to Fabian. He blushed. Leonid's reaction guessed what he had guessed. So there is no place for a man to stick his insolent red face. And what is his business? The Archduke tried to recover from the shock. Concentrating on himself, he really had no idea where his interlocutor was heading. Rudy explained that in his position, the most important thing is to take care of the presence of a male offspring as soon as possible, especially since they, as newlyweds, will succeed on the first try. At first, the guy politely asked to perform a favor for him. Then the essence of it was expressed succinctly, but in an obscene word in short to make him shut up. Leonid laughed. Teasing a friend is very fun. Be that as it may, did she really save his life? So it's true. But who thought of hiring a child to kill? The poison on that dagger would be enough to knock down an entire horse in an instant. That boy was definitely a murderer, concluded Leonid. And she seems to have known it from the beginning. Conclusion? Yes, she is not one of those who know how to lie. And this is not the only case. Marcia prevented him from eating the poison dessert. Rudenki looked interested and puzzled. That's strange. Does Fabian have any thoughts on this? The prince assumes that she is extremely observant, but there must be something else, because not everything matches. Marcia seems to have read the intentions of the killers. Sometimes she behaves extremely primitively. Take at least an unnatural reaction to your own story. She is a talentless actress, but confidence is beyond the limit. He tries to figure everything out on his own, never asks for help. By the way, she should be assigned a personal maid, but you need to think carefully about the candidate for this position. Seeing the prince's plan, Leonid decided that his friend was drowning in the storm of his feelings for his wife. How touching it is. This is necessary. Found a life partner. Changing Larissa's clothes for bed, Marcia noticed from her yawns that her sister was completely sleepy and tired. I put it in and turned off the light, but the girl was trembling. 
Did she freeze? It's okay. Sister is nearby. It seems that she's having nightmares. As soon as I lit the candle, the shaking stopped. Afraid of the dark? Naturally, after living in the basement. Only half a month has passed since she was rescued and started living in a place where there is light all the time. You still need time to fight your fears. Marcia saw that the girl was sleeping with the cookies she had baked during the day. She covered it with a familiar green handkerchief like a blanket. The girl kissed her sister on the cheek with dreams of new discoveries and pleasant experiences and the hope that the girl will grow up happy and cheerful in the future. Larissa woke up from the kiss. She grabbed the kissed cheek and blushed. He looks at his sister. Marcia apologized for waking him up and explained that she kissed him so that he would have good dreams. I promised to be there. She should not be afraid. And she sang a lullaby. The girl dreamed that she was traveling through the clouds, but she was no longer alone. She was accompanied by a cookie that came to life and became a little man who can move arms and legs. The man frightens that the sister wants to eat the girl once he touches her cheek with his lips. Larissa explains that this is a kiss for a good night's sleep. The man asks how it is. Mala gets on her knees, as Marcia does in front of her when she explains something, and says that you are kissed, and then you have good dreams. So this is a wish for pleasant dreams. The girl feels the touch of her sister's hands in a dream. At the same time, he feels a tingling sensation, as if the whole body is on fire and he wants to squirm. The man says that she beats Larissa. The little girl denies it. No, she strokes him. When the little man asks who she is, Larissa goes to look for answers in her dreams. And when he wakes up in the morning and slips out of bed, he approaches the couch where Marcia is sleeping and touches her head. The archduchess opens her eyes and sees that the girl is standing next to her. The reaction scared the child. Marcia is surprised to realize that she was watching her sleep. Last night, the girl slept without her hind legs. I would have known that it would be like this. I would have slept next to it. What joy. The first thing she saw that day was Larissa's face. She will make sure that her sister will smile every time she sees Marcia. The blonde wishes the little girl good morning and asks if she slept well. The girl gets out from under the blanket and looks like a kitten. To get used to it a little, he suggests having breakfast here. Probably she still needs to recover after so many walks. The child eats breakfast with pleasure. Marcia asks her not to hurry. The girl looks through the window at the garden. Today is a beautiful day. It's such a pleasant beginning leads to the conclusion that this is a good sign. A dark green dress makes her image complete and refined. Marcia informs Larissa that the weather outside the window is wonderful, and if so, this is a great opportunity to play outside. An attractive gray-eyed girl dressed as a maid entered the room. She wished Milady good morning and called herself Sophia. The Archduke appointed her a maid for Marcia. This is a surprise for the Archduchess. Fabian has been extremely busy lately, but still finds time to take care of them. In that case, it's nice to meet you. Sophia asks to let you know if anything is needed and, mentioning the important news for the girls, informs them that their room has been renovated. You can look. The room is highlighted by luxurious furnishings in brass, gray, and grayish-green tones. Brown sideboard of dark wood, even a grand piano. No one lived here for a long time. That's why it took so long to restore order. You can instruct them to move their usual furniture here and decorate it according to your taste. Marcia wonders why she was given such a huge room. It's like a whole separate house. That's not all. Sophia showed a separate fitting room. The girl herself made sure that Milady was satisfied. Asks to let you know if something needs to be replaced. She will do it immediately. But how many clothes are here? The Archduchess neither closed her mouth nor her eyes in surprise. Larissa looks calmly, only a blush on her cheeks. The maid gives a tour. Here are spring dresses. And he is there. Everyday clothes. The Archduke asked to make sure they had a wide selection. Marcia says that even with a daily change of dresses, it would take her ten years to wear each one. Is he really that wealthy? Marcia asks Sophia to choose a comfortable dress for a walk in the garden. The girl asks, Is it necessary to choose for Larissa? But Marcia wants to choose herself. The girl looked at the girls, smiling with an intelligent look. Marcia guessed that she was aware of Larissa's state of health. She must have learned about it from the doctor. Sophia announced that she had prepared a separate room for Larissa downstairs. What would she have her do? The Archduchess is not ready to leave the girl alone yet because she cannot sleep alone in the dark. 
Larissa listens carefully and silently. But one day, she will be able to sleep alone without worries and will be able to stay to herself. Marcia asks if it is possible to put her in her place for now. Larissa will be able to go home as soon as she is ready. Yes, of course. And where do these doors lead? Is there a guest room? There is a bedroom for them and the Archduke, just in the middle of the room? So, the Archduke sleeps here most of all. Marcia imagined an intimate marital scene. Oh no, this will not happen in life. She will not sleep here. This place will only collect dust. She didn't even share a bed with Larissa. If you need to put something here, no, no, it is necessary to leave everything as it is. And in my mind, she is unlikely to use this room anyway. Can Sophia bring everything she needs here while Marcia goes to kindergarten? The girl got dressed in a cherry and white dress, and the boy got a blue and lemon dress. A really great day, and the weather is inspiring. She also got a room and a devious maid. Larissa now has magical outfits. I wish every day would be like this. The lady smiled dreamily and hummed a melody. The archduchess heard her father's angry thoughts. Is it a mansion or a palace? What an ungrateful girl. Dare to betray him. If he thinks he can hide, he is very mistaken. Marcia is surprised. How did he appear here so quickly? The news about their engagement from the capital to the territory of Blyke should have reached at least a month later. First you need to hide Larissa. Marcia took her sister's hands. Now she has to go back to her room. The girl was extremely alarmed. It is impossible for him to see Larissa, but the girls did not have time. He called out the sisters' names and called them his most valuable treasures. At the same time, Larissa's eyes became like an explosion of a rainbow and full of horror. Marcia was angry. The child was hiding behind her wide skirt. No, Larissa is a person, lives and breathes. She is not someone's property. Father came here knowing that they are here. Igor can sue Fabian if it turns out that he was hiding an underage girl. They can get into a huge mess and the sister will have to be returned. He must be stopped. Enough, but how dare she give orders to her father. Then Marcia ordered Sophia to immediately take the child to her room. If only I wouldn't cry, Igor shouted to the point where he was taking her, his Larissa. Marcia barked that they need to talk. But why would he talk to her? And push the girl. The father asked the smaller girl to go home with him. Larissa was trembling and screaming for herself to be saved, not to be beaten because she was in pain. It doesn't matter what happens to her. Marcia will not let you touch the girl. Running away with Lara is her decision and will not allow him to close the child again. She said she wanted to talk. And she grabbed her father's hand. Does she think her new status will make a difference? At that moment, leaning on the railing of the second floor, the boy laughed. And how can this man call himself the father of the Archduchess? Who is this? Richard asked if this was Larissa's father. Since he doesn't have a title, he doesn't have an education either. Marcia seems to have changed. She does not think that this is a problem. Count Lawrence also did not receive a proper education. Exactly. By the way, this is the first time she has seen someone raise his voice in front of the servants. Igor, hitting himself in the chest with his hoof, declared that although he did not have a title, he was still a nobleman. Richard concluded that from what he had just seen, this man was not a particularly welcome guest. I wonder why. Immediately, the gendarmes came and dragged the baron away. Even if he had the right to take away Larissa, who would let him do it, thought Marcia. Suddenly, the butler came up and asked if it was Sir Ihor Blake. If so, the Archduke invites them, along with the Archduchess, to his office. Tea was poured for the visitors. Igor philosophized, let her run away and live with another man, but for that he forgives her. Marcia reasoned that since she was of marriageable age, he would have sold her to some nobleman anyway. The fact that she seduced the Archduke himself is commendable. But he cannot forgive her for running away with Larissa. Let the father not worry. She takes great care of the little one. Igor exploded. Enough! Does she really think he doesn't understand her intentions? He was terribly lucky to find out that... Marcia interrupted with the words that Larissa is not his property. Ha! She always ignored her. Her current desire to care about her is extremely hypocritical. Didn't she prefer the room farthest from the basement? Marcia crouched down, put the cup down, and hugged herself. She simply couldn't bear to watch her suffering. What shamelessness. No matter what she wants, he will take her with him. At that moment, Marcia's husband entered the office. The girl stood up and immediately made a knee. Father stood with fists. Formally, like at a reception, Ihor thought. 
He can threaten others as much as he wants, but this will not happen with him. Why is Fabian looking at her with such fire in his eyes? What did she do wrong? Ihor was the first to speak. He turned to the Archduke. This is a huge misunderstanding. He came as a father who did not find his children at home one morning. I was especially worried about the smaller one. Larissa is so shy, she has never even been outside. The Baron was talking nonsense. If he hadn't been told where to look, what? Someone told him about them? He thought he'd lost his little blood forever. Marcia interrupted her father's lie by asking who told him about them. I read Igor's opinion. Is it stupid? Type, he will say. Maybe Eloise Conrad will come to him more than once. So Fabian's cousin told about them. It turns out that she deliberately found Igor and revealed everything. Igor attacked the Archduke with accusations. Is he in his right mind to take away his children? One of them is still quite small. If Larissa won't get married because of this, he must take them. Marcia thought that this was an even worse delusion. He obviously had no intention of marrying her off and shouted that she would not return there for anything. And Larissa, too. Igor said in a conciliatory tone that since his majesty had already agreed to the marriage, Marcia would have to be given up. Then he shouted, but not Larissa. He will take her immediately. Marcia was seething. The liar from the very beginning came here specifically for Larissa but he presented everything as an act of generosity and continued to say that Larissa is very young and not adapted to life. He will not be able to live without taking care of her. Marcia's anger turned on Fabian. Why is he silent? Didn't he forget about the contract? Is he really human? He looks ominously with his red eyes. I, whore, could not stand it. How can you look at people like that? Did he say something wrong when he said that he was very worried about his daughter? As a father, he has the right to take her away. Will he not give it to him? Yes, he understood everything correctly. Fabian spoke with emphatic politeness and put his hand to his heart as a sign of the truth of his words. Igor recognized the boy he met in the tavern by his voice. Igor screamed. He said that he had not seen her, his most precious daughter. This is a kidnapping. Crime. He can't believe he took her and married her. Marcia countered that she should have tried better and not let her daughters run away. At these words, the Baron swung and hit his daughter in the face. Fabian pressed her to him and said that he was guilty because he had not told his dear father-in-law about the engagement in advance, but all the words said then in the restaurant were true. They met later. The Archduke smiled sweetly and offered to sit down and talk quietly. He said that when he saw the beautiful Marcia, he fell in love with her at first sight. Does he know how reckless men in love sometimes behave? After a short conversation, he proposed to her. And this after he saw his quest? Didn't he think that he should have informed his father immediately? Putting his hand to his heart, Fabian said that at that moment, he thought only of the godlike woman in front of him, and this picture overshadowed everything, leaving only the thought of connecting their destinies as soon as possible. Of course, his daughter had done the wise thing by delaying the answer and saying that she should ask her father's permission, but he forced her to agree and looked at her passionately. She smiled broadly. If he plays, he does it flawlessly. Igor fainted and muttered that he had not been able to contact them until now. Fabian explained. The day he put the wedding ring on Marcia's finger coincided with the untimely death of his grandfather, the previous archduke. Marcia thought to herself, Oh, and liar. Everything was wrong. Ihor's arguments convinced him. He received these sad news. The guy continued that after the funeral, he had to rake through piles of documents day and night, so there was no time for communication at all. Igor could not understand. Why did the Archduke work personally and not entrust the work to servants? Because the affairs conducted by the Archduke are of great importance for the whole country. They must be carried out in good faith. Otherwise, His Majesty will personally come for his soul. How can such important matters be entrusted to subordinates? And continued to coolly sip tea. Marcia thought that it was hard to believe that he was so good at lying. How glad she is that she signed a contract. This person scares her. He was going to visit the Archduchess's father in person, but he didn't think it would take so long. He admits his guilt. Ah, that's how... Igor understands everything perfectly. From now on, it is considered that he gave his consent to the marriage. Marcia can act as she wants, but he will leave here with Larissa. Fabian expressed his gratitude. Now he feels better. By the way, 
Does dear father-in-law plan to return to the estate just now? Igor defiantly replied that he would be glad if he was escorted. It is much easier and safer to travel by carriage than by train. Marcia listens anxiously. The Archduke will gladly provide a carriage. However, unfortunately, Miss Larissa is unable to make such a long trip. She needs to stay here until she is fully recovered. Upon Igor's exclamation, what does this mean, Fabian said that he had received news that today's meeting between the father and the children was quite strange. Why didn't Larissa jump into the arms of a caring dad? Fabian asked with a confident smile if Larissa even considered him her father. The girl should rest. There is nothing to worry about because this is her sister's house. Marcia nodded to him. Thoughts that Marcia took all the diamonds and didn't even inform about the marriage crawled out of her father's head like black snakes. Everything is clear with her. Igor clenched his fists angrily. The girl denied herself and laughed out loud and said that there is a very good doctor here, so there is nothing to worry about. If he thinks that his daughter is not agreeing to something, then she is honest with him. Do not lie. She is trying to grab Larissa. Everyone who has seen them will definitely confirm that he loves her. Fabian turned to his dear father-in-law with the words that probably his soul became empty when two daughters left him at once, so he prepared a small comforting gift. The box was delivered. In the box, there was a kilogram of gold ingot and a rolled-up document, a certificate of ownership of a gold mining mine in Keflan province. The mine's reserves will last for the next thousand years. Igor instantly turned into a happy Scrooge. His pupils narrowed greedily. Is he going to pass it on to him? Marcia thought that her husband had committed an act of extravagance. In addition, Fabian gave a bright smile. Do you like the gift? While Larissa is recovering, Igor can take some comfort in his loneliness. Igor ravenously reached for the box. Larissa still needs to be returned, but diamonds take a long time to mine, and gold can be obtained immediately. Well, if it's not for long, for three years. What? For three years? The greed of the miserable landlord turned out to be excessive and uncontrollable. Marcia coolly explained that Larissa said that she needed at least that much to feel better. And he will get a profitable gold mine, isn't that bad? Igor screamed that it doesn't work like that, they will talk about it. Fabian interrupted him, that he could bear a lot, but one should not raise his voice at his wife. But she is his daughter, what happens when a father raises a child? The Archduke sharply condemned this psycho. Now she is, first of all, his wife and he allows him to create anything just for her sake. Therefore, let him take the gift, while the Archduke is still kind, and go. He called Portis and asked him to lead the guest to the door. Gendarmes helped. Igor continued with what he started, that he should be released immediately and by what right they are stealing his daughter. Fabian turned sharply to say goodbye and assured Ihor, as soon as the agreed term is over, he promises to send his daughter to the Blick Mansion, and he will not tolerate this kind of attitude towards himself anymore. Peace and order once again reigned in the Loren family. It was a beautiful day, but everyone's mood was badly spoiled. Concerned, Prince Loren looked at his wife carefully and said he would call a doctor. Marcia looked back at him in surprise. He explained that the girl's cheek was burning from her father's blow and very gently and delicately touched the earring, leaning very close to her face. She blushed with excitement to match the dress. I felt that he was thinking about how I whore had dared it all. An assassin should have been sent to him even now. Marcia assured him that everything was fine. There was no need. He had not hit hard. Thank you for keeping your word. Fabian frowned and said that there is no need to apologize. A contract is a contract. He is glad that he prepared for such a development in advance. The man apologized for not being able to protect her from the blow. From this moment on, he will accompany her everywhere. The girl profusely thanks, repeats that everything is fine, he has already sent him away, and expresses gratitude for the certificate. It will be paid for in three years. Fabian seriously asked if Marcia really wasn't bullied. I thought that maybe she just didn't realize that it was bullying. That maniac could not torture only one like that. Yes, she spoke honestly. Fabian's eyes burned with a righteous fire. He would do everything to ensure that nothing like this would ever happen again and he thought that whoever dares to touch his woman will not escape responsibility. The shocked girl looked at him with wide open eyes. That is, his women. They are bound only by a contract. At least that's what she always thought. The guy turned around sharply, hiding his emotions. And more. From this moment on, 
titles and officialdom are in the furnace. Let him call him simply Fabian, as in the first days of acquaintance. And slyly looked over his shoulder. She cannot understand whether they are close, or her heart just flutters for no reason, or is she just screwing herself up? Leon had broke in with a glass of wine. His eyes were squinting. His gait was uncertain. Fabian scolded Portus. He warned that the boy should not drink. Poe asked how he was supposed to stop the Marquise. Yes, yes, even though Fabian is an archduke. For him personally, he will forever remain the same small. A little boy who couldn't even raise his head but changed so much. This is worth living for. The young Archduke joked that if anyone heard their chatter at that moment, they would suspect that he was talking to a 70-year-old grandfather. The Marquis, not letting go of his glass, asked what happened to the guest who made today's riot. Fabian paid him and threw him away. Oh, how, praised Leonid. This Blick family is kind of strange. What? Fabian loosened the knot of his green tie. He looked bored to death. Leonid explained that it is a family where no one reciprocates love. Marquis was clearly drawn to philosophy. Rudy revealed the essence of the newly formulated concept. The father does not like the soul in his daughters, and they reject him. The wife is worried about her sister, but it seems only about her, isn't it? Fabian thought about love. Why is Miss Marcia so protective of her sister? He is not familiar with this. He had no brothers and sisters. Her father's actions are also illogical. This is not love. Obsession. What? Larissa? Lauren's train of thought reached a dead end. In fact, the reasons for which Marcia is so protective of her sister are not the same as her father's? Some nonsense. Isn't it family? Miss Marcia obviously loves her sister. Leonid was shocked. Is Fabian seriously calling his wife Miss? That's small. The problem is not even the missed wedding night, is it? A couple of liars. Is love at first sight a lie? His friend is not one of those people who are frivolous in relationships. He rarely opens up to strangers. It took a long time to win his friendship. Once he got married as soon as he became an archduke, then marriage is a fiction. There can be no place for love, but their concern for each other looks so believable. Maybe Leonid misunderstood everything. Fabian noticed his friend's smirk and asked why. He put his hand on his shoulder and said, so that a friend does not pretend that he has never held a handle. Is Leonid drunk? What kind of assumption? No, the redhead says seriously. Lots of eyes and ears around. Everyone sees everything. If you insist on love stories, then you need to behave accordingly so that there is no fuel. How did Leonid understand? Is everything so obvious? The current situation will depend on how well he plays sincerity in the marriage. None of them benefit from having the marriage recognized as fictitious. How to look like a real couple? He did not have a single woman who would love him, and he himself did not meet anyone. What to do to look in love? Portis entered the study and asked why the Archduke looked tired. Is he worried about something? All right, by the way, what about his special commission? Portis reported that according to the testimony of Blick's servant, the lady's brother, Willen Bleak, is even worse than his father. But he recently disappeared somewhere a day after the escape of the lady with Miss Larissa. Willen is a gambler and drinker, so they searched for him in local bars and found him. In addition, the financial situation of the Blyke family is even worse than expected. The business, in which Igor had invested a lot of money, burned down, which shook the image of the family. Marsha Bleek's jewels were pawned in one of the pawn shops. They were investigating how they got there. Willen probably sold them to pay off his gambling debts. None of them cares about the well-being of their family. What a father, what a son. Fabian slammed his fist on the table in anger. His eyes burned like embers from a volcano. He clenched his teeth. This relationship resembles predators in hunting for prey. A frightened maid ran into the office with the news that Lady Larissa could not sleep all night and was having convulsions. If someone approached her, the symptoms worsened. The lady does not let anyone in. She says that she will take care of her herself. But when they both fell asleep, one of the maids quietly peeked at them and... Fabian dimly rushed into Marcia's room. Where is she? Half a dozen maids in uniform bowed submissively. The girl with blue eyes and completely gray hair was crying that it was her fault. She came in to clean the dirty chair. Fabian dismissed the servants and stood holding the doorknob with the thought that if he came in, he would show extreme disrespect. Although they are married, she does not let him near her. No wonder, because of the contract. But to maintain the legend, he must enter immediately. He imagined how he would put his hand on her shoulder. 
Supporting his wife is a husband's duty, Leonid said. You have to look flawless. He must enter. He saw the cookie. It was broken. It looks like it already was. Bellman and Sophia came up. The doctor apologized. Fabian praised him. He knows that he had to help all night. The doctor admitted that he had taken a nap. Sophia added that the lady did not allow anyone to touch Lady Larissa. The young lady was alarmed at the approach of others, and she also did not dare to come in, bringing medicine. It seems that she feels an incredibly strong shock, Sophia reported. Fabian asked why he was not notified immediately, because the lady asked him not to disturb him. From now on, let him report about such things. Fabian was called by Richard, who was waiting near the lady's chambers. He excitedly asked how the lady and Larissa were feeling, because he heard it happened because of that bastard. In response to Fabian's question as to why the boy was asking this, Richard explained that he was also a member of Lauren's family. Why doesn't anyone tell him anything? He has to go back to the academy, but he can't even say goodbye. He understands that she is not in the best condition now, but... The guy almost cried, holding his hand over his heart. The Archduke tried to calm the little boy by saying that the doctor would take care of her, to which Richard exclaimed... This doctor let his grandfather die. Fabian's pupils narrowed and flared brighter than the ruby that adorned his brow. And he said that Dr. Bellman was only carrying out his instructions to prevent assassination attempts. Was it murder? The young man went cold with terror and could not regain consciousness. Fabian promised to let you know when Larissa got better and asked her to wait at his place. The Archduke approached the groom in a wide block. It smelled strongly of hay. Fabian said that he wanted to go for a walk and asked to prepare the horse. The groom glanced at his master. He had never seen him ride a horse in such an outfit. A filly peeked out from behind her shoulder. The boy was running and thinking, how can he tell anyone about this? Why is she so concerned about others? So that the little one would not bite her tongue during a seizure, Marcia sacrificed her hands. She only endlessly reassured her sister. That Frederick, who left him the title, that Dominique and Valerie, who wanted to get rid of him, even Eloise, saying that she loved, despised, hatred all around. Marcia is different. She worries only about her sister, whether she will become a duchess, whether a good doctor will take care of her, whether she will be safe. Her thoughts are only about Larissa. Even their marriage is for her sake. Marcia's only desire is to protect her sister. One day she can lose a lot. In particular, myself. Why would she go to such lengths and how could someone mean so much to her? How can she love with all her heart? She will do anything for her sister. This is love. Can this love one day turn against itself? And then she will sacrifice herself smiling? Obviously, she has problems. As long as she cares for her sister so sacrificially, this suffering can be repeated. And then he will be able to separate Marcia from them, only when he helps her sister. Because she is his, his beloved, she will not be able to escape from him, with or without a contract. He chooses such a family. Where at the family dinner table are those who are happy to see each other and laugh instead of humiliating and poisoning? The newspaper with the news that the Archduke Frederick Loren died unexpectedly. His grandson Fabian became the new Archduke, and the identity of the Archduchess is kept a secret, fell into the hands of Marsh's brother. The blow of the fist on the table was such that whiskey spilled out of the glass. Intuition told Willen that, despite logic, it was his sister who became Fabian's wife. He remembers the morning when Marcia disappeared with Larissa. No traces could be found anywhere. The chance to see the Archduke was almost zero due to heavy security. He was in the residence. How then was she able to meet him, and even more so to get married? It is obvious that Marcia wants to take advantage of Larissa. Maybe the girl is sitting in the basement under even greater control. You have to make sure, but they won't let him go. There is an idea. You can meet someone less protected from this kind, for example, with Dominique Lorraine, who could not become an archduke. Marcia looks at her sister. Phew, she finally calmed down. It was awful. It is necessary to clean while she sleeps. What? Cookies? When Larissa had an attack, the maid came to change the underwear and the little ginger man collapsed, falling out of bed. And the seizures intensified. I wonder if the maid put it here. Larissa panicked when Igor appeared. She felt very strong stress, the girl baked these cookies herself. This is the result of its development. Escape, delicious food, fun, life in safety. Sophia was happy. Larissa no longer trembles when she enters. Because of these worries, she did not know that Richard had already left. This was also reported by the maid. 
he told the lady to worry about herself. Marcia thought she would convey his wishes later, when she felt better. The girl woke up and saw a surprise. Her sister handed her a plush doll in the form of a gingerbread man. She is not very similar because she does not sew very well, but she hopes to bring joy and relief. And it won't break even if it falls. And they will bake together again, and each time it will turn out better. If something breaks or there are troubles, she promises to be there and always protect her. When Marcia already thought that she did not like the gift, the girl hugged the doll, and abundant tears rolled down her cheeks, bouncing off the bed with big diamonds. Oh no, where does it hurt? Can see. Clear. These are not tears of pain. Let him cry as he wants. And the girl hugged her sister to her. She won't let anyone in here. She sat next to me until she fell asleep. You have to prepare dinner by the time you wake up. By fate, she saw whole scatters of diamonds and began to clean them. Dominic received a guest. He asked if the eldest son of the Bleak family was in front of him. And why was I looking for an opportunity to meet? Willen said that he mentioned in the letter, as a big brother, he wants to bring his sisters home. And it's unfair, the man manipulated, what Dominic rightfully deserved, someone else got. Dominique shouted angrily, pointing a finger in front of him, that of course he felt injustice. Willena's sister had ruined everything. If she had not married, he would have become the Archduke. Willen suggested that the parents of the bride and groom oppose the wedding. Dominic countered that the emperor had already signed, so such actions amounted to a personal insult to his majesty. But what if Marcia has flaws that disqualify her from being an archduchess? What will he say to that? And what are the disadvantages? The Archduke's uncle looks expectantly at the blonde, his arms folded across his chest. He can't say yet. It is important for him to return only his younger sister. If Dominique helps save Larissa, Willen will reveal the necessary information about Marcia. Now it is difficult to decide something. Sums up Dominic. You need to brainstorm for a while. He will contact him later. Okay, Willen will wait for the decision at the address where he stayed and bowed down. A bearded man eavesdropped from behind the curtain. His name is Nikos. Dominic gave him an assignment to track down the Bleak family. Marcia decided to hide the diamonds in case Larissa ever wanted to be Archduchess. Someone came and Marcia went to open it. It was an Archduke with a determined look. She asked what happened. He asked how Larissa was. It is strange that he is asking. He could have read the doctor's report. She said that the girl is better, but she is sleeping. They can talk outside. Her attention was drawn to a strong, sweet smell, like perfume. When she asked if he had come only for this, he handed her flowers he had picked with his own hands. The strong smell was of lilac hyacinths, although there were also yellow crocuses and small white flowers in the bouquet. The girl happily accepted the gift. The man explained that the garden was blooming, so he picked a bouquet for her. Because I heard that they rarely leave the premises— the saffron has already faded and the daffodils haven't started yet. When Marcia said that Larissa would definitely like it, Fabian was surprised. She doesn't know what her sister likes. In response, the girl assumed that he understands flowers, which she took off. When he asked if they needed anything else, the Archduchess burst out in gratitude for everything she'd already received. He said that these are small things, and tomorrow at this time he will bring Marcia even more flowers. The next day, the Archduchess blossomed like a violet. She combed her hair and put on a cobalt-colored dress with emerald buttons. Larissa was also nicely dressed and braided. Hearing a knock, she ran to open it. This is Fabian with a bouquet. Larissa came up. It seems that she is no longer afraid of people. In this perspective, the girl was not as tall as the prince's solar plexus. Beautiful. Is not it? He collected them himself. Because Larissa looked happy, the girl invited him to the room to drink tea together. Does she like daffodils? With this bouquet, she is like a daffodil fairy. The orchid fairy will take the orchids. How roses will bloom. He will give her a whole bouquet. Marcia concluded. Fabian has excellent taste, so even he knows how to express feelings. And at first it seemed that he was not a romantic. With such a gentle look, he is several times more attractive. Marcia was happy. That was what she was thinking as she watched his face change. As soon as they shake their eyes... Did he smile because he noticed her crush on him? The girl asked if it was true that Marquis Orlov had already left and expressed regret that it was so soon. He helped her a lot. Fabian could not remain silent on this and asked if he was very sorry. 
Then he assured that Leonid will come often, and you can see him at social evenings, where they thank him together. She asked if he liked social evenings. Not really. Then why does he want to accompany her? And she's sorry. It's so much fun to dance with someone in a pair. He said he really didn't know it was fun. Marcia complained that she had not had the chance to attend banquets or dance with her partner lately. Such evenings are beautiful, especially the music. This is also a great opportunity to get close to interesting people. And she thought to herself that there is an opportunity to stay away from words that she does not like to hear. Sophia offered Larissa to put a bouquet in a vase. But she can leave one flower. Fabian addressed her personally. He heard that she likes daffodils, but they quickly wither. The guy invited to admire the flowers in the garden. He can bring them every day, but the flowers don't last long in the vase. Marcia heard the girl's gloomy thoughts. The flowers are dying, dying right now. And she rushed to explain, but Fabian explained better. Daffodils are very strong. If you cut them, the bulbs will live in the ground. And after winter, they will bloom again. No matter how much they are cut, they will grow back. Listening to him, Marcia reasoned that because of the contract, she didn't think he had such a warm look. Previously, she thought that he lived only by cold calculations and cared only about his own interests, but he is actually a much nicer person. The girl confirmed her husband's words and offered to go see the flowers if the girl felt better. And soon the magnolias will bloom. You can make tea from their petals. With warmth in his voice, Fabian said to Larissa that the magnolia petals will wither as soon as they fall, isn't it a waste not to use them? Isn't it great to go out and admire the flowers and then drink some tea? You only need to put the petals in a cup. It smells like ginger with cinnamon. Marcia suggested that he knows a lot about flowers. The boy said that he lived in the forest as a child. It was clear from his thoughts that there was evil there. And he asked if she would like to go hunting, where they catch animals and release them themselves. This is a tradition. The girl laughed that it sounded great, but she couldn't shoot or ride a horse. He explained that all the ladies usually just have tea and eat sweets. Well, it is better to hunt than to sit and eat. He offered to teach her. She dreamily promised to think about his proposal. This atmosphere was very pleasant for him. Marcia wondered why Eloise had caused such trouble. And cousin Fabian roared into the pillow on the classics of the genre. She wanted Igor to take away the stranger, but instead he took a bribe and left. Why isn't she in her place? Why didn't he choose her? Eloise was in love with Fabian from the day they met for the first time, and their eyes crossed. Nanny Heloise then explained that he was Archduke Frederick's grandson, that is, her cousin. Men poked their fingers at him. The son of a witch, disciple of the devil, he is worse than commoners. Dominic shouted at his father, asking why he had left this creature alive. He is the son of a witch. They must kill him. He is the shame of their family. Six-year-old Eloise wondered why he was so smeared. He is also a nobleman. I couldn't make out the expression on his face in the dark. Only many years later did she learn that his mother had died then. Therefore, Archduke Frederick sent Fabian to the academy. And the boy did not show up for his father's funeral. Eloise could not forget his face and saw it again after graduation. He asked how she was doing. She understood. It would be difficult to achieve his reciprocity but he was a disgrace to the Laurens, and therefore in no position to reject her, so she just waited. But how did that girl dare to bring him in? It is impossible for him to fall in love at first sight and propose to her. Suddenly, a guest came, Marcia's ex. The young man was waiting in the living room. It was a great honor for him to meet Lady Conrad. His name is Carl Cleave, and kissed her hand. The girl assessed his appearance as unremarkable and suitable for Marcia. She asked if he had heard any news about Lady Blick. He said that he had broken off the engagement with her quite some time ago. The girl inquired about the reasons. He said it was because of her father because he ruined his business. That's why he didn't want to contact them. Be that as it may, does a girl who grew up in such a family have what it takes to start a family? Although she is very beautiful. Does he not know what happened next? No, because everything is over between them. Then Eloise said that she had brought in someone else's groom, her fiancé. It amused him because only a couple of months had passed since their separation. Amazing woman. Amazing? Eloise intended to arrange a meeting with her ex. She would suddenly remember where she was. But he is not one of those people who will bury themselves in other people's women. And he has no need for money because he inherited his father's title. She asked, what does he want? 
He wants to marry Eloise. What? This scoundrel clearly calculated everything. The maid told him to watch his words. Before him was Lady Conrad. He laughed that he was joking. He just needs her to introduce him to her circle. It's a small thing for her, isn't it? She was still holding her head, digesting the stupid joke. Okay, she agrees on the condition that no one finds out about her involvement. The only way. So who is the fool who chose his ex instead of Eloise? This is the Archduke of Lauren. The interlocutor had sweat on his face and his jaw dropped. Does she think he should win the Archduke's wife? But if anything, he will never find a new bride again. Eloise assured that no one would blame him. She would arrange everything so that all the blame would fall on Marcia. The Archduke is her cousin. Therefore, she cannot be against him or openly oppose him. He agrees. In return, he asks her to find him a bride and receives a promise. Poe brought letters. Fabian thanked and said that he wants to learn to dance and asks to invite a teacher. And let it be him. He does not want to hold the lady's hands. Portis is surprised. His friend hated dancing and would have to hold girls' hands at balls. The Archduke explains that avoiding dancing forever won't work, especially when he's given the title. Poe said that one of his lordship's letters was worth reading for himself, from Carl Cleave, which begins with words to the author's beloved Marcia. Fabian ran his eyes over the lines. How difficult is it for her to be separated from her lover and pretend that she has found someone else? Soon they will be able to see each other and put an end to their suffering. He reserved the loggia in the opera house as usual. He also prepared an elixir. All she needed was to mix two drops of it with the man's food. She needs to be patient. He hopes they will be together again soon. The letter was signed with the words, Your Beloved. Fabian began to figure out who sent the letter. There was a pseudonym on the envelope. Portis said that Count Dacci's post office had delivered and he would immediately find out who the sender was. Fabian asked if Poe noticed that Marcia had a special relationship with someone. Only Lady Larissa comes to mind, but he knows about her. From a recent investigation, Poe learned that she had a husband. The wedding was canceled until the meeting with Fabian. His name is Carl Cleave, the son of the Viscount from Northland. The reason for the breakup was the bankruptcy of the Blick family. The addressee seems to want to insinuate that she is poisoning him. The proof of a lie is that they erased their tracks. This man does not know how Marcia saved his life and that they do not eat together. What is she? Why is he so angry if the letter is fake? His eyes glowed like a red warning light again. Marcia and Larissa were served desserts, and she thought that the Archduke had taken care of fresh strawberries, even though it was not the season. There was a note under the cup to make sure she wasn't being watched. Further in, the note was an invitation to the Duheb Opera House. The loggia is booked in the name of Cleve. If she does not come or comes with someone, he will reveal the secret about the basement. It is definitely neither Igor nor Willen. They have no reason to meet. And what secret will be revealed? That Larissa was kept in the basement? Or that her tears turn into diamonds? If the first, she knows how to act. The secret about the diamonds will be revealed, and Larissa will be hunted by misers. Those who know about the basement and whose name starts with X can only beat Hari, Larissa's nanny. If so, then Willen sent the letter. Marcia decides to leave. She asks Larissa if she agrees to be alone. The girl nods affirmatively. Fabian goes straight to his wife with a letter. He apologizes for reading it and tells the contents. If she really loves Carl. But at this moment, it turns out that Marcia left on urgent matters. Fabian asks Sophia where she went. The maid does not know. She was only asked to prepare a carriage. It seems the lady looked alarmed. Marcia came to the opera. She thought about only one thing. No one should find out the secret about Larissa's tears. She was afraid to go. The memory of the accident remained. Interesting, why does the nanny want to see her? She worked for Igor. Only she could enter the basement without being accompanied by a family member. And why did you choose such a prominent place? At that moment, Carl came in. In a few more minutes, the Archduke rode up and said he was looking for an incredibly beautiful lady with golden hair and green eyes, about as tall as his shoulders. He was told she was here, but not alone. At the moment of the conversation with the worker of the opera, Fabiana called Eloise, who seemed to have risen from the ground. She said that if she had known that her little brother was interested in opera, she would have invited him. The girl grabbed his hand, pulling him into the opera, but the prince pushed her away. He told me to take him to the balcony where Marcia is sitting, then he himself. 
Eloise thought that on condition, if she does well, he won't treat her so coldly anymore. Half the job is done once he ran, and she offered to go to the balcony reserved by her. Marcia was shocked and asked Carl where the nanny was. Is this his letter? He took it out allegedly to see if his name was there. Yes, this is his letter, but you can forget it, because he only wanted to lure her out, and tore it up. The girl tried to tear out the letter. Fabian watched this scene from the balcony opposite, and Eloise asked if he could see well. Carl begged for a smile and lied that he was grieving. The letter is clearly not his. Eloise looks at Marcia and Carl through binoculars and says that they are quite close. Fabian is silent. She notices that he is worried and dares to accuse Marcia of betrayal and that she does not deserve him. Fabian guesses that Eloise conspired to pretend that Carl is secretly seeing his woman and begins to laugh. The next moment, ignoring Carl's pretended persuasion to be friends, Marcia catches the thoughts of Marcus Conrad's daughter, who expects that Lovelace will at least offer her lady some water. Fabian remembers that this is what he told Marcia to do. To luxuriate as much as her imagination will allow, he does not care how much she disgraces his family name. The guy says that Eloise is behind all this. What he sees doesn't look like an affair. She looks nervous. If she cheated, she would do it secretly and not openly. But it is strange that his emotions prevail in relation to Marcia. If their agreement had not been remembered, he would have completely lost his self-control. He looked contemptuously at his cousin and told him to leave immediately after the performance. The girl could not stand it and shouted that he knows that only she loves him. How can he look down on her so much? Lauren's whole family despises him, but not her. How could he marry another? He has only known her for a few days. She has no family, no dowry, no education. Compared to Eloise, she is nobody. Even if Fabian had been reincarnated, even then he would never have fallen in love with Heloise. He never fought for the title, and never loved a cousin. No one looked at the origin here. She slandered Marcia for nothing. When Eloise said that she wanted to be with him because she had never met anyone more beautiful than him, he said that it was not love at all, but a desire to possess him. She accused the Archduke that he did not love Marcia and had not even slept with her once. Didn't he marry for the inheritance? Eloise is better than this first encounter. Why can't he love her? Fabian objected. Who said he didn't love Marcia? Looking at the opposite balcony, the boy saw that something was wrong there and rushed to help. Eloise was sure that she would make herself fall in love. And what happened was that Carl offered the girl a drink and she splashed it in his face. There was nothing wrong with it. She deliberately stood in a prominent place so that he would not climb, but he swung. Only Marcia had the thought that there was nowhere for her to go, because Carl barricaded the door with himself, and behind the railing she cowered in anticipation of a blow, as Fabian appeared in the thick of events. She just said his name. Fabian asked who dared to lay a hand on his wife. The guy explained that he didn't have time to look for the door, because he was here for the first time, so he just came through the railing. It was faster. The woman is in danger. Carl stared in amazement. Did this madman just jump off? And if it crashed? And what to do now? He could still handle a girl, but an angry archduke? What did Eloise do? Is this a sham marriage? The fleeing, grieving lover. Where did Carl Cleave go? The archduke's cousin could not act personally and framed him. That's a bitch. He did not touch her, and I wasn't going to. Carl began to come up with ideas on the go, to come because Marcia asked him for help. The girl played along, what she needed. She already heard you can let him go. In parting, Carl threw a phrase that the Archduke would take better care of his cousin. Marcia read his thoughts. This Carl will not forgive Eloise Conrad. It's time for the newlyweds to talk. What was it anyway? Marcia excused herself that there was nothing between them. Carl broke off the engagement himself. Isn't the prince angry about the secret meeting? Fabian is angry that something could have happened to her. He was worried about her. Doesn't she know what type it is? It was necessary to hire a maid. Marcia said that the meeting was a personal matter, and she could not leave Larissa. I had to tell him, so that in any case he could always find her. But nothing happened? Nothing. This man almost hit her. Not so long ago, Igor struck. He will be very angry if she once again finds herself in danger by going out without an escort of her own free will. 
That is, he is angry because she left alone and does not suspect her of cheating? The girl looks at him from under her forehead and presses her hand to her heart. The man kindly looked at her with clear red eyes. He knows that she is not that kind of person. All her thoughts are occupied only by Larissa. She turned away. No, it's not like that. Fabian doesn't know the truth. The reason she put Larissa above everything else is that she is her sister. She just needs to be made happy so that Marcia can live. If the secret of the Bleak family is revealed, Fabian will hate Marcia and try to kill her, as in the original. Will he be very upset when he learns the truth? Fabian interrupted her attempts to dare to open up and invited her to listen to the opera. A separate balcony was reserved for the Lorenz. If Larissa wants, they will take her too. Reading his point that even Heloise would agree to something, Marcia scoffed. So he was meeting Lady Conrad here, and where is she? She did not stay for the performance and left upset. Eloise sobbed because she lost and didn't know how to introduce it into her. Even if it worked, he wouldn't love her. An emphatically polite and extremely tense Carl was waiting for Lady Conrad. He stood soaking wet and without his outer clothing. His face betrayed evil intent. Conrad noticed the young man's strange appearance, and she said that it is better to return. He needs to look at his face. He pointed to her carriage, but it was not hers. Had the coachman confused it? The ominous Carl Cleave, whose expression resembled a real maniac, shoved her into the carriage, saying that it was precisely with this that no one had confused anything. What does he do? And what does it have? The rumor about her debut in the world has already reached the northern lands. He fulfilled his part of the contract as much as possible. Eloise promised to introduce him to a good family. He was angry at her naivety. She had already lost the Lauren's trust. And he said that now Eloise will be his mistress. Temporarily. The lady is upset that her lover has left her, but the gentleman passing through the prose calmed her down. Isn't it typical? The poor woman wants to forget everything, but a sensitive man could not leave the poor woman alone with grief. If a woman and an unmarried man run away together, rumors will surely spread. No one will believe her excuses. Is not it? He could not find a better bride than the Marquis's daughter. If they marry, he will inherit the title of Marquis. And her face is nothing. He fell in love with her at first sight. He would not marry a woman for whom he has no feelings. The girl screamed and resisted, called her a liar, stutteringly demanded to stop the carriage immediately, begged for help. I thought about jumping out despite the high risk of injury. Carl said that the coachman listens only to him. They are going to his distant relatives. The house is a little dirty, but it is possible to live. You'll get used to it. It's nice there. The carriage stopped, and someone menacingly ordered Carl Cleave to get out immediately. Eloise thought, is Cynthia here to save her? Carl looked out. Four men in black cloaks. You have to take the girl hostage and run away on horseback. But he didn't have time, feeling the cold breath of the muzzle on his temple. Poe ordered to leave the girl immediately. Two men dragged the maniac out. Portis gave his hand to Lady Conrad. The lady sent another carriage after her. She will be taken home, and he will see her. When Eloise asked the name of her savior, Poe introduced himself, but said that the real savior was the Archduchess. A few hours before, Marcia had told Poe, who was already mounted, that Lady Conrad's carriage had recently departed and that it was now up to him. He assured that there is no need to worry. Marcia gave her carriage to transfer Eloise there when the kidnapper was caught. How is she going to get there now? She dared to ask Fabian to call a carriage for her. Instead, he offered to ride together on his horse. He does not want to leave her alone in a carriage whose coachman he does not know. A ride on a horse will cheer her up. It's clear that she doesn't like carriages and for him to ride together is an honor. The man helped Marcia get into the saddle, sat in the back himself and asked her to hold on tighter. He felt that his wife did not know how to ride a horse. On the way, she asked how he found her, and the guy told about the fake letter. He arrived and realized that something was wrong. I apologized for reading it and not passing it on. Marcia took the blame on herself, but everything turned out for good. It's a good thing that he checks all the mail. That's why he was able to come and help her. Fabian remarked that Eloise seemed to know that he was reading all the letters, because the letter seems to be for Marcia. But Lady Conrad knew its content. The Archduchess thought that since things are like this, it seems that there is a rat in the place that leaks information. 
although there are loyal servants, as in Dominica from Valeria. Who is Eloise's informant? Fabian chastised himself for not checking enough of all the servants. Marzia reassured, It's just that the owner has just changed and everything will be fine. But she didn't know that Cleve would be in the opera and that he was so ugly. The man asked Marcia not to worry that Eloise was in the hands of that scoundrel. Portis would catch up in time. In fact, instead of excitement, the Archduchess feels compassion. The person she loved for many years was taken into her life literally from under her nose, and she can understand her in a feminine way. How did she know what Carl was up to? She said that she asked him. And why is he interested? He could not reveal his intentions in such a stupid way. And the couple began to agree on dinner. Marcia noted that his voice was very soft. Since when did he start treating her like that? She feels like a truly beloved wife. For some reason, she is so embarrassed that she cannot even raise her eyes. He asked if it was Marcia's first time riding a horse, and she admitted she had a pony when she was a child. The father had difficulties with the business and sold it, and interest in horses faded. But if I had known, I would have taken driving lessons. Fabian ordered to take the reins and relax the core. Otherwise, everything will hurt. His horse will not let her fall. She thought that she was not afraid to fall. That's great. Marcia thought about how skillfully Fabian solves all problems, even though he is only three years old. In three years, Larissa will become an adult. Oh ho, are they as much as six years apart? Then her thoughts turned to the book, which became the source of all these vicissitudes. When Larissa comes of age, her love will be fabulously beautiful, because the only prince capable of protecting her is Fabian. But if the prince, what will happen to him? She doesn't like it. His gaze and breath are so close that the silence becomes loud. He said her name. Maybe he is not comfortable when she sits like that. No, he just wants to ask her not to solve issues like today alone. They are a couple. Does he perceive her as a real wife? He seems to really like her. With him, she feels safe despite court intrigues, provocative letters, and persecution. And in the battle for Larissa, she is not alone. Fabian is with her. And she promised not to do self-governance anymore. He stared at the innocent smile. When she defends her sister with complete dedication, she looks so grown up. But now he sees her weak and soft side. Marcia will grow up soon. When he came of age and entered the upper echelons of society, he never danced, although he attended balls. Because everyone avoided him because of his mother's blood, so he showed no interest in return. Fabian didn't think about love, except that it might come someday. But, as it turned out, Adult life is as hectic and short-lived as steam. This young girl is so mature, he must protect her. Upon arrival, the girl thanked him for trying to drive more carefully through her, and she went to her room. She did not find Larissa in bed and panicked, but then it turned out that the child was just waiting for her sister. Sophia began to apologize that the lady had to put the baby girl herself, but the archduchess reassured her that everything was fine. The maid reported that she caught the person who left the letter. It was that blue-eyed maid. Her hands were tied behind her back, teary-eyed and frightened, trembling, the same age as Larissa. My name is Kitty. The girl begged to forgive her. Marcia chased everyone away and began to interrogate. It is necessary to understand who was receiving information and for what. Does Kitty even understand what she has done? Mala replied that she had received the letter and handed it to the hostess. She swore she didn't even know who gave her the letter. She could not resist a silver coin. The hostess denied that she wasn't. She was following them to sell information. Kitty roared that no. It was her first day on the job, and she just handed over the letter, nothing else. Marcia said that she herself was here recently. Doesn't she know that in the place of Blake, her maids were called ladies? Or even the very evil of the Blake family? And she threatened that if an ordinary maid disappeared, no one would notice and the Archduchess would simply pay off the maid's family. Therefore, it is better to tell everything. From the bad thoughts of the maid, Marcia found out that Nico was the initiator here. Marcia said that since the girl has a cute face, she will deal with Nico first. Did she think that only she was caught? The Archduchess manipulated that he would ask her a couple more questions and see if their versions would match. Who gave her orders? Lady Eloise. Since it only works for a few weeks, Nico from the factory informed the Archduchess about all the activities. Marcia called Sophia and asked to bring Nico. It reached the little girl that no one had caught Nico yet. 
The Archduchess summed up that she did not care in what order the maids were interrogated, and Sophia told to deal with Kitty properly. Being strict is the only way to keep Larissa's secret. It was reported that Portis had returned. Lady Conrad is at home, Cleve is caught and imprisoned. Most likely he will be held for a week and will not be released early regardless of the proposed sums. Two hours later, when Nico was brought in, Marcia was standing over her with a red-hot poker. The servant swore that she knew nothing but the information that had been passed on to Eloise about the Bleak family, nothing specific. She knows that the family constantly went down to the basement, and the maid brought food there. Marcia never went down, so she is beyond suspicion. But if it comes out, even Fabian will not save. It seems that no one knows about diamonds. If this is revealed, Larissa will be kidnapped by greedy people. A few days later, Eloise was sent to prison, and no one showed up for Larissa. You can sleep peacefully. Marcia found Fabian in a bar. He asked what she wanted to drink. She said that she trusted his taste. Should I admit that I like wine more? What a handsome man. He has power, money, intelligence, but no flaws. If she loved someone, it would definitely be someone like him. Only there is no other like it. She praised the aroma of the tea and thanked her. And he can do it all. He asked if she wanted to tell him something. She is embarrassed to talk about it. What about, about married life? There are rumors that they do not behave like husband and wife, and this rumor should not spread. It cannot continue like this. If their conspiracy is revealed, the marriage may be declared invalid and trouble will befall everyone. What does she offer? When she said that there were a couple of ideas, but the most effective way was to sleep in the same bed, he blushed and accidentally spilled his tea, sputtering in surprise. She laughs that it's temporary and then they'll pretend to have a fight. Is there a headache? A sea of options. She will sleep on the couch. They just have to pretend. Fabian considers this provocation to be madness. How can he let his wife sleep on the couch? But she is not a real woman. If this option is bad, you can just spend the night together. Have fun. Is he angry? Dislikes the idea that much? You can't do that. And he himself cannot take his hands off his face. It burns with fire. Thoughts created Brownian motion. You can arrange a honeymoon or a luxurious party in honor of the wedding. Give a ball and behave there like a couple in love. It's all difficult because how to leave Larissa alone. Okay, sleeping together is not so bad. Fabian sacrificed his peace. They will see each other this night. Marcia was over the moon with happiness that it was possible to reach an agreement with just one conversation. In the evening, after putting Larissa to bed, the ruddy Marcia went to the matrimonial bedroom. Now it's time for the two of them. A couple of hours before that, the hostess made her maid cover herself with her nightgown and questions about whether it is not worth spending the night in the matrimonial bedroom in pajamas. Marcia, with a conspiratorial expression on her face, packed a whole box of things with her, mostly the games she used to play with her sister. She plans to have fun all night. Entering the matrimonial bedroom with excitement, the girl saw lit candles and many red roses and petals on the bed. She angrily raked everything away. Her husband caught her behind. He asked, what is she doing? Warming up? She blushed to the tips of her eyelashes. The guy came in looking like he'd been walking around all day. The girl accused him of being a traitor because he came in this form, because he had to change before going to bed. Okay, let him go to bed already, there's no need to go change. And she set out to loosen his grip. He blushed and wouldn't let her touch him. I closed my eyes to control myself. He said that everything is fine and sat down to work. But Marcia adjusted to a playful mood and asked to spend time with her. Because the night has just begun, she wants to play something that can only be done at night and got chess with backgammon. He blushed again and sat down at the round table. Ah, uh, these are the games she was talking about. He had little to play. In this case, she peacefully suggested that we simply talk, for example, about childhood. It is not so bad to learn more about the man. It will help to portray the couple in a natural way. These words upset him, and he said that it is better to play something. The girl began shuffling cards, thinking about the reason for his escape from conversations. Maybe through the mother? The young archduchess said it was boring to play just like that. How about a match? Whoever lost will fulfill the wish of the winner. He agrees if it is something that is not difficult to do. She began with the words, let him drink. The guy interrupted, he can't drink today. She burst out laughing and laughed. Why is he so serious? She only joked and winked. 
and she herself blushed. During the card game, he accidentally covered her palm with his both of them. The girl thought that this was a romantic atmosphere. He lost again. Now he owes her 3,000 gold. An ordinary person does not earn 500 gold in one month, but here one rate is like this. It's not interesting to lose all the time. Can you play something else? The Archduke asked for another game to play back, and this time he won. And what is his desire? He wants her to answer the question. Why does she want Larissa to become an archduchess? Marcia thought that if she had stayed away from Larissa, she would have died at the hands of the prince. If they do not meet, the future is uncertain. There is no title, no money to escape, and they will be caught quickly. Will Fabian believe her if she tells him? He is a prince from a fairy tale who falls in love with the main character, while Marcia is a secondary character. She can't say. In this case, he will wait with desire. Oh, how petty. And who just played for ridiculous amounts? Why big stakes? She wondered. This is not gambling. She fell in love with his smile, but came to her senses, persuading her not to succumb to his charms. And she submitted Dengu, whose actions will cause the tower to collapse. He lost. And she asked if the walls were soundproofed. Because what will the servants think if they hear that they are playing with sticks? Let their imagination play out. He blushed again from these words. Marcia still fell asleep. He is so exhausted. Her new image, different from every day, stood before his eyes, beckoning to touch. How many times could their promise be broken? As soon as he opened the door and saw him like this, his nerves were stretched like a bow, hands touched while playing cards, although she looked so calm. He pretended that nothing had happened. Before, he could feel nothing when he touched his hand. But now, the finger felt hot from the touch. Sits and cannot take his hands off her hair. So that her neck would not swell, he took the woman in his arms and carried her to the bed. I continued to admire how she was sleeping, Marcia. If something happens to her sister, she immediately notices it. But are his feelings so imperceptible despite all his efforts not to betray himself? From the very beginning, he had no intention of divorcing until his position was strengthened. He would adopt the child, spitting on the sarcastic rumors. But whether they have a good relationship or not, it's not her fault. But she doesn't leave him indifferent. And stroked her braids again. At first, she was wary, and not at all like she had heard. Even in times of danger, Marcia still stands her ground and does not seek luxuries. And he loves his sister so much. Next to her, he feels warmth every moment. She is so amazing, and bent over his face. Fabian chastised himself for his impatience. In the end, he turned off the floor lamp and lay down on a small sofa. Marcia was surprised to wake up in a soft bed. The maids, on her husband's orders, brought breakfast and apologized for leaving before she woke up. Sophia wondered if the lady was tired, for the archduke looked as if he had not slept all night. The girls giggled shyly and said that the bath was ready. The archduchess laughed in response, thanked her for the bath. While drinking tea, Marcia noted that in any case, the plan worked. When Marcia's braids were being combed, she mentally scolded herself for falling asleep. How could she look him in the eye now? She promised. What's up, Larissa? She looks into the garden and holds the book she read the day before. Does she know how to read? Of course he can. And she chooses them herself in the library. Why then asks her to read? He probably wants to spend time together. Instead of silence, she wants to listen to her sister's soothing voice. Marcia decided to talk to Bellman about why Larissa is not talking. The doctor said that there are no problems with the voice, as well as with the understanding of speech. And he can read. The problem is in the psychological state. Then when will the girl recover? She decided to ask the doctor for advice. She once heard that witches can heal mental wounds. The doctor excitedly asked where she had heard that. The lady can't say that, even in the place of the archduke. Why was he so panicked? They can only use magic, can't they? If only she would get better. How wonderful, Sophia asked out loud. Had she ever seen witches? Seeing the girl's excitement, Marcia explained her ignorance by the fact that she was from the countryside and had always considered them characters in fairy tales. Are they really capable of something? Sophia doesn't know much about them, but sorcerers can do that too. Marcia remembered the conversation with the man. He said that some red-eyed men could use magic, but not him. Why are men called magicians, and women, witches, and does it have anything to do with their ability to heal hearts? Not finding an answer, I asked Sophia. 
She didn't know either. The girls went for a walk in the garden. The spring flowers have already bloomed. The sisters were dressed in black and white dresses. You have to swing on the swing. Larissa still doesn't know what it is. Sophia also offered to swing. The girl looked as if accepting a challenge. Meanwhile, another maid prepared magnolia petals to make tea. Remembering how Fabian talked about this tea, Marcia became confused and surprised. Why does his voice seem so real to her? She tried to stay up last night to invite him to tea. Would invite him again, and Larissa liked the swing. Her hair is in such a charming mess, mixed with the flowers of the fruit trees. She really is a fairy. The nurse handed the child a cup. It was the magnolia tea that Fabian had talked about. As soon as it is no longer hot, you can drink. In the meantime, can you read her a fairy tale? The girl nodded affirmatively. Suddenly, Marcia was called by a man. He said that she had not had time for herself for a long time. Wouldn't it be rude if he joined? Oh, he doesn't look like he's been up all night at all. A real prince. The woman invited him to join the tea party. But he said that he did not come empty-handed, but with gifts for both of them. Eyes like large obsidian, shining silver fur and mane. Portis was holding a beautiful white horse by the leash. A funny bay foal was standing next to him. Oh no, it's not just a means of transportation. Marcia was so shocked that she could not speak. How can such beautiful creatures exist? Fabian said that it was in honor of the fact that Larissa could finally go outside. A gift, so to speak. Marcia was happy like a child. Two grasshoppers. She is incredibly grateful. Doesn't Larissa want to go for a ride? The prince turned to the girl. One horse is for her personally. He is very friendly, which will help her learn to ride. Here is a horse for Larissa. This is a gift from Fabian. The girl is touchingly studying the little animal with her big eyes. Yes, now she is his mistress. She reached for the handle, and the foal nodded, scaring her. Fabian showed how to treat the grasshopper with sugar so that it does not get nervous. Finally, she also tried to give a treat to her new friend, then stroked her, and the horse gratefully licked her palm. She fell down from surprise. The prince gave the girl a hand to help her stand up. Did she get stuck anywhere? When asked if she likes horses, the girl nodded. Perfectly. Then you have to name it. Does Marcia like horses? Yes, they are so beautiful. Larissa was scared, but now she looks happier. One day she will ride it calmly. She could not think of such a gift. That's just what a man is supposed to do. And he turned away, hiding his excitement. But you could see how his ears were burning. It wouldn't hurt her to name her horse either, and she needs a riding instructor. Thinking that he could not trust others, the Archduke chose a candidate for the role of teacher, let it be Portis. For this, his workload will be reduced and his payment will be doubled. On such terms, the guy agrees. The first thing she will do is show the stable. Larissa tugged at her sister's sleeve, hinting that she should go there too. But first, the Archduchess invited everyone to celebrate it with tea and cake. Marcia asked Fabian to step aside for a few words. She apologized for falling asleep. She really wanted to spend the whole night with him, even fell asleep before that. He said that there is no need to apologize. They spent the night together and exchanged gifts, that's enough, and he asks not to stay the night together anymore. She learned that he was tormented by the thought. If he went through this again, he might not be able to hold back. She thanked him for today, as well as for the offer to spend them, and said that she would manage it herself, because he was busy. She resented the idea that gifts and relationships were only for other people's eyes. It is difficult for him to share the same room, but they are also an unreal couple, and fell in love with the game of a pair of white doves. In the dream, Larissa and the ginger man were trying to figure out why the clouds no longer gathered above and below them. The man said that he cried so much that it rained and the cloud got smaller. Larissa could not understand the logic. When she cried for her sister's gift, the clouds decreased, and because of all the tears, the clouds always only grew. The man was afraid that if the cloud became very small, he would fall and break. Larissa took him in her arms and reassured him, everything is fine. He is plush, soft, and will not be hurt if he falls. Hey, Cookie, look at the baby. They gave her a foal, like in a fairy tale, says the little man. So cute, long legs, shining eyes, and the golden mane resembles Marsh's braids. Larissa from a dream is jealous of the real one. The girl asks the little man, will she be able to make friends with the foal being among the clouds? The man is surprised. She is the Larissa who has a horse. And suddenly the girl seems to fall from a cloud and finds herself without a little man. But in front of her is Sister Marcia. 
So the girl in the clouds is her. She came down for the first time and walked in the warm sunlight. She walked on the grass holding hands with her sister. I was making cookies, dressed up in clothes that smell nice, heard that she is cute. Even if someone terrible comes, the sister will protect her. Marcia looked after her at night. It all happened to her, actually. She no longer has to fall from the clouds because she has a sister. This morning, the girls dressed in soft pink dresses. A surprise awaited them, a bunch of gifts. The boxes contained riding clothes as well as hats and shoes. Everything is so expensive and high quality. Marcia has a riding lesson just south. Maybe Larissa wants to learn to ride a horse? The girl's mouth fell open. Portis showed Marcia the stables. She really was incredibly elegant in white pants and a jacket the color of dark chocolate. Can he teach to ride so as not to hit the horse? She was worried about scaring Larissa with a whip. Portis said that there was no problem because all knights could ride without spurning their horses. Marcia called her sister to come closer. The class was going brilliantly. Portis said Marcia had a knack, and she herself said she enjoyed her studies as well. And the child became much closer to the grasshopper and it looks much more energetic than usual. It was nice to see how these two little creatures interact with each other. The next morning, Marcia wanted to wake up Larissa, but she was nowhere to be found. I had to call the servants. The maid explained that the girl had gone to the stables. That's where her older sister found her. The girl stroked her brown friend. What, the grasshopper likes it so much that it can't sleep? You have to have breakfast first. It seems that the foal is making a good impression. Her behavior already resembles natural behavior for her age. We need to spend more time with him. After breakfast, the girls went to the horses with baskets of carrots. Marcia immediately wanted to remember the first lesson and saddled her Snow White, but she had just started to move when she met the man. He heard from the assistant that she learns quite quickly and offered his hand. Marcia hurried and boasted that she was good at simple physical exercises. It is so nice when a talented person praises but he should love Larissa, not her. And she tried to switch his attention to the girl. He should spend more time with her. Fabian said that the girl deliberately puts Larissa higher than herself, and no matter what she thinks, it is Marcia who is his wife. This is her position, not Larissa's. The heart is pounding. Why did he say that? It's bad if she falls in love with him. He added that he gave the horses not because of Larissa, but because Marcia wanted to learn. And she was happy after receiving a gift. And Larissa's foal, for the sake of Marcia's smile. It was all for her. And he kissed her hand. And he added, because he knows that she loves Larissa. Here is the reason. Now, at her request, talk to Lara. After preparing the contract, Fabian looked at her exclusively as a partner. They live in the same house and have never been on a date. He is uncomfortable even sleeping in the same room. But now he treats her like a real woman. Does he like her? No, she is not the main character of the story. Marcia only confuses kindness with feelings. You can't fall in love. The next morning, Marcia felt restless. She was troubled by memories of conversations with her husband, as well as the reason for her negative attitude towards sorcerers. And I went to the library to find out about this issue. In the handbook, it was said that magic can be used only by those who were born with it, and that is what magicians are. It is inherited in 50% of cases. The use of magic depends on gender. Women can influence only living objects, that is, active in medicine. Men, on the contrary, can only enchant objects, move, cut, are responsible for working with equipment. Therefore, ordering about love addiction is the work of women. And those willing to take advantage of this cursed magic pay huge sums of money. That is why they are called witches. But the development of science brought with it the development of medicine, now, people do not need to turn to charlatans for extremely high remuneration and without any guarantee of effectiveness. The position of magicians weakened. People began to hunt them for money. They also became the target of nobles who wanted to hide their dark dealings related to cursed magic. The ability to read the emotions of other magicians comes easily. Thieves started a witch hunt to steal, and the aristocracy turned a blind eye to it. Therefore, most of them disappeared over time. Money is to blame for everything, thought Marcia. If someone finds out that she hears bad thoughts, they will also take her for a witch. She told Ihor and Willen, but they did not believe. People with magical powers have red eyes, but children of witches only inherit eye color and extremely rarely abilities. 
Just like Fabian, he can't use magic. But just having red eyes is enough to be called the son of a witch for the rest of your life. He certainly had a difficult childhood. After the meeting with Igor, it became clear that Larissa's mental health is extremely bad and the traumatic experience has consequences. So the witches won't help her. Can they find out how to improve the condition? Marcia noticed that she had been reading all night until the morning, and suddenly she saw how Larissa had already left and headed for the stable. When the sister came to the stall, she saw that the little one was lying next to the horse. How lonely was she from constantly spending time only with Marcia all these two months? It seems that she can do everything herself. Fabian's gift became very important for Larissa. How can you not fall in love with such a charming child like Larissa? The child woke up from the hug, and Marcia asked why she was not sleeping in bed. The girl answered that it was kooky, and she smiled. Tears flowed from the girl, and she asked to say it again. Larissa said the entire phrase with a smile. Sister, this foal's name is Cookie. Marcia's tears flowed uncontrollably. It seemed to her that it was a dream, and in front of her was a girl a thousand times more beautiful than the tears of a magical fairy. Her voice is warm and emotional. The sisters hugged. Sophia couldn't find either sister that morning until they both came alone. The girl was worried and asked to let her know if she was going somewhere. We must give them warm water. Larissa loudly apologized to Sophia for the worry. From now on, she will do so. Sophia dropped the tray with the cup, fell to her knees in front of the girl, grabbed her hands, and joyfully said that the lady had finally spoken. Marcia was beaming. A couple more maids ran in at the sound of broken dishes and asked if something had happened to Lady Larissa, and the girl said that she was also grateful to them. The news quickly spread around the country. All the maids wanted to bring a cart with lunch to the girls' room or carry sweets to hear this long-lasting miracle, and no witches were needed. At the next knock on the door, Sophia cursed, but it turned out that it was the Archduke himself who came in his own person. Of course, he was missed. He wanted to run as soon as he found out. Fabian found the sisters doing their hair. He noted that Marcia's behavior, facial expression, and polite way of speaking were different from the usual ones. She is as proud as if her own child spoke. The Archduke waited until the hair was ready, and then he leaned over to the girl and said that he had received news that she had already given the name to the horse. Larissa politely stood up and, nodding slightly, as if nothing special had ever happened to her, said, Yes, Kuki. The prince sat down in a fatherly manner and praised him for his sweet name, well done. Without conspiring, all three dressed in dark green clothes. He stroked her head and said that he would give her something. Does she want something? The girl said no. Just being with her sister is enough for her. She is very happy now. The elder sister thought that her plan to live her private life after giving Larissa for Fabian had completely failed. But she does not regret it at all. And again tears flowed. Larissa with a smile wipes the tears from her sister's face with her fingers. She understands that these are tears of comfort. The Archduke watches this sweet scene with pleasure. Having put the little one to bed in the evening, Marcia shoved the book about magicians into a drawer. Now that Larissa has become much better, should she look for some other outside help? Although there is still work to be done. The girl thought about how hard it was for Fabian because of his origin. It left an imprint on his heart. In the morning, Marcia took the book about the history of magic to the place where she used to take it, to the library. The heavy tome matched her outfit today. This day was the best awakening of her life. The worst was finally behind her. Larissa entered a new stage of recovery. All she needs now is fresh air and nutritious food. It is necessary to saturate each new day of her life with bright impressions usual for a girl of her age and status. It is from them that her new healthy memories will be formed. As soon as Larissa enjoys happiness from day to day and achieves a healthy balance in her state, she will have to be told how this world works. Find a good mentor. Marcia suddenly felt someone swearing at her. Only this was not enough. The last time something like this turned into big trouble for her and Larissa. It was in the place of the Blycus that the girl heard daily curses, insults, and similar verbal impurity, which tormented her more than torture. And from this there was simply nowhere to go. Even the highest tower did not save. After a little investigation, the Archduchess discovered that the source of the unbearable thoughts was in her husband's office. Is it a tense business conversation? 
From the further content of the statements, it became clear that this is not the kind of person with whom Fabian would deal. Because the inner voice was angry, how much longer should he bow before this witch's nest? The evildoer said that no one reckons with anyone except his own cousin. We must snatch as much as Lady Conrad took. Marcia had to figure out what Eloise was up to here because she was always inconsolable. Not only did she drag her ex into fights, but the Archduchess also had to save Conrad herself from the consequences of her actions. Marcia broke into the office without knocking. With an angry expression on her face, she assessed the situation with the intention of finding out why the hated name was mentioned again in her house. The Archduke sat at the table with a calm expression on his face. His constant assistant in all matters, Portis, stood next to him and with his back to the entrance, the source of unpleasant thoughts. The fair-haired visitor, learning from Portis's shout that the Archduchess had entered, turned and thought that she had forgotten. It was clear from the expression on his face that he was not happy about the extra witnesses of the conversation. The first thing Marcia apologized for was entering without knocking. She approached the table and said that she had to tell something. It was a lie. The real motive was to solve a puzzle involving Eloise. Marcia pretended to be a naive fool and said that since the men had a guest now, let them continue the conversation while she was reading a book, hinting that she would sit quietly in the office and wait her turn. It seems that the Archduke took this appearance as something already familiar, maybe even as moral support. Marcia always knows the right moment when she can be useful with her mind-reading talents. Turning to the man by the name title Baron Riviera, the owner asked to continue. As expected, the visitor was startled by the presence of an extra pair of ears. Pretending that etiquette bypassed him so much, the Baron said that it was not convenient in the presence of a noble lady, much less an archduchess. Fabian said that he had nothing to hide from his wife. In any case, the archduchess will find out about everything, so you cannot worry. Marcia sat down and shook her head. If only this Riviera would continue without unnecessary conversations. She needs to know why he has Marquis Conrad's daughter on his mind. Pretending to read, the girl guessed from the Baron's words that he is the owner of a company in which Fabian is one of the investors, namely in the development of a car, and remembered how they talked about it on the train to Dippy. The girl was glad that her idea to call the development a car was not put in a long drawer, as often happens with her proposals, but went to work. Baron Riviera explained that, unfortunately, nothing happened with the successful implementation of the improvements. They suffered an unfortunate failure. How much money did that Ivan take for endless experiments? And how much money these so-called magicians have wasted? The speaker's face read a lie. In their family, Fabian sensed cunning better than anyone else. But in this case, it was too obvious. But the phrase about wizards stuck with Marcia. She believed that magicians hide their talents so much that it is almost impossible to find them. From what I heard, it is clear that the mentioned Ivan is the inventor of the car, but he cannot act openly because of the red color of his eyes, so his affairs are managed by Riviera. If Ivan is really one of those unique people who were born with the ability to overcome even the laws of physics, then he probably knows where to look for people like him. Herzog is absolutely sure that without Ivan, this new technology would not have been invented. He was given a list of the materials used and is ready to assure the Baron that it is true. Riviera excused himself that perhaps some reports are missing, but retail prices have recently risen sharply. They agreed with the Principality of Tifres, but the price of oil increased there. I hinted that the brake system proposed by the Archduke is also not perfect, so they continue to waste precious metals. In his mind, the Baron cursed that he didn't have enough money for anything. He wanted to get his own. Marcia seems to hear with her nose that the hand of the Marquise's daughter is involved. This handwriting of confused but short-sighted intrigues is characteristic of this restless person. Riviera could say that the budget is not easy now because most investors have withdrawn their contributions. There must be a reason why he lies, and she must be related to Eloise Conrad. If you think about it that way, on the day when the incident happened, Fabian didn't say a word about her, about Conrad's presence in the room, she learned from his thoughts that he would need Eloise more than once. Why then? Did Fabian not tell her anything about the content of that secret conversation with Eloise Conrad? 
It is obvious that it was something fundamentally important. And why did he come here again and try so hard to get additional funding for the project? Is his purpose unrelated to the car? What does he really need? What is the reason for his lies? Suddenly, when the Baron thought that it was not enough for him, and he will see which of them will be the winner in this game, Marcia recognized the Willen suit on this Baron, and also the manner of communication, and understood everything. Ah, so he is a gambler with them as she sees. She still has goosebumps from the fact that Willen caused so much pain to Larissa for years, just because of his gambling and drunkenness. This unpleasant guy is no better than the soulless criminal Willen. She slammed the book shut and stood up. Spends the Grand Duke's money without excess on instant pleasures. Archduchess Marcia Lauren sharply turned to Baron Riviera with the words that she will not tolerate this anymore. She sees right through him, 